I'm a meat eater. Why can't you let me just get on with eating meat? And you eat your gruel and we're all go home happy. You're destroying the planet and you're killing billions of bees. Can I, I don't get it. Can I respond? And you're, and you're wrecking Big Ben. What I was talking about, you want to save animals. I've never seen anyone say, save the leeches, save the mosquitoes. If you heard that ticks were endangered, would you start a movement to protect ticks? It's not chicken, so don't call it chicken. I don't get it. Save the mosquitoes. Don't call it milk. Welcome all to this year's Meat Flakes of the Year special live stream. I'm so, so pumped by that intro, honestly. <laughs> it's so over the top and it just gets me so giddy and excited. So I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did. What are we going to do today, guys? Well, I hope you're all feeling like a bit of an inhumane roast because that's what it's going to be. And you get to decide who wins Meat Flake of the Year 2022. So let's... Let's, before we get into this, let's actually define what is a meat flake. Maybe some of you are new, maybe some of you forgot, right? It probably is a good idea for us to actually say what it is before we start getting into this and deciding who we're going to vote for for 2022's winner. And trust me, we have some seriously good nominees. We have some big <laughs> contenders. I am, I am definitely pumped to get into this. So, all right, let's have a little look then. What is a meat flake? I'm going to pull the definition up for you right now, and we're going to read it together, make sure we're all on the same page. Meat flake, an official definition, really in the dictionary, guys, promise. Definition of meat flake, a way of referring to someone who is too easily upset and offended by vegans and or someone who regularly attacks and insults vegans in an attempt to counteract the feelings of guilt generated as a result of vegans exposing their abusive lifestyle choices. For example, I hate vegans. They're such a-holes. Why can't they just be vegan and let me do what I want? <laughs> that was I don't know if you heard that, but I had a light set up here and it just fell. Anyway... No one is stopping you from doing anything. Vegans are just making you aware that your lifestyle choices are abusing animals and trying to appeal to your better nature to get you to go vegan and stop abusing those animals. Stop being such a meat flake. So basically what I'm saying is a meat flake is someone who generally gets offended and attacks vegans because they're offended by what vegans said, which is usually just be kind to animals. That's enough to get these people all kinds of riled up. And that's what, you're, that's what you're looking for today, guys. The, the one person that you think deserves to, to have Meat Flake of the Year 2022, that title, that prestigious title of Meat Flake of the Year 2022. How can you vote, right? This is the question you're probably all wondering right now. What are we going to do today? For those of you that weren't here last year, at least, if you're here last year, you know how it's done. If you weren't here last year, let me explain. Each nominee is going to have a unique word or unique name of the nominee that you're going to put in the live chat to vote for them, all right? So each individual will have their unique code, their unique name, their unique words, and when you put them in the chat, you get one vote, okay? You, they, they, they get one vote. But you can't spam it, all right? So if you say the same person 20 times, it's just once. You only get once. But you can vote for every single person if you want to. Do you understand? So you can vote once for everybody. That's fine, but you can't vote more than once for everybody. You could also just save your, your votes for the one you think is the worst. This is up to you. But you can't vote for, for example, Piers Morgan 20 times. You can only vote for him once. But you can vote once for everyone if you want. Understand? We're going to tally it up at the end, and then you get to decide. You guys are voting. We'll tally it up. We'll count the votes, and you decide who is 
the worst meat flake of 2022, the the meat flake of the year. It goes down to you guys. You decide it. If that makes sense, let's test it out, all right? The voting system. If that makes sense, put in the chat right now, I know how to vote, okay? I know how to vote. This will tell me you know what I'm talking about, right? And then you've understood all those rules. If you're watching on the replay, by the way, you can still play along if you're not watching live. If you're watching this again on my channel, get in the comments and vote and see if you you got you got it right at the end, you know? See who you think, uh, tell us who you think is winning, and then at the end, you'll get your answer. I think that's a pretty cool game to play if you're not watching it live as well. A couple of you saying, I know how to vote, great. So we know that we've all got it. And check this out, guys. There's a new addition to this year's Meat Flakes of the Year. We're actually gonna have a special Meat Flake Fighter Awards. So I'm gonna give some awards out to people who have been fighting against meat flakes over the 2022 that I think deserve some special mentions. There are gonna be some people you know and some people you definitely support, so stick around for that. So, what does the meat flake of the year 2022 win? I hear you asking. What do they win? Hmm, well last year I had a trophy. It was a small trophy, it was all right, it was made of plastic, it was kind of like a fake Oscar type thing. Not this year. This year, I've got something a bit different. It's made of solid gold, and uh, it looks like this. This is the uh, face palm trophy that goes to Meat Flake of the Year 2022. <laughs> it's not really solid gold, as you can probably tell, but it sure looks good, right? I'm pretty excited to give this to Meat Flake of the Year 2022. Uh, either in person or virtually. I take it back. They're not getting this. I think this is too awesome. We're going to use this every year, okay? But they'll have it in, in spirit, okay? We'll, we'll send them an email with the picture, and there you go. So it's the face palm trophy, uh, because that's how we feel when we see these guys, isn't it? That's how we feel when we see these guys, right? So this is what, <laughs> this is what Meat Flake of the Year 2022 wins. <laughs> So guys, uh, if if you don't know how to vote, I've seen, I've seen a few people in the chat that aren't sure how to vote. Don't worry, uh, Annie will explain it again and again and again as we go forward to make sure everybody still understands how to vote, and so will I. Whenever we uh, talk about a nominee, a contender, don't worry, we are going to explain how to vote for each person every single time that we have a meat flake come up. Now, one more thing before we get into the nominees, all right? One more thing I wanna tell you about today's stream. I have a list of meat flakes that I think, well, all the, also that you think, actually, a lot of the meat flakes I've chosen, you suggested, right? There are a few that I took as well, but mostly you guys decided who was gonna be in this list, which is really cool. But if there's someone that you think should be in this list that isn't in the list yet, okay, and you don't think they're gonna be in the list, so imagine it's somebody from your DMs, a tweet, a Twitter you saw, a Twitter post you saw, a tweet, or an Instagram post, or some video that I definitely haven't seen and you know it's not in the list. You just know it, right? If you have something like that and you want me to include them in this list, now, I can't, I can't do it for everybody, obviously, right? I can't just look at the live chat and pick out your individual screenshots and stuff like that. It, it just doesn't work. So what I'm gonna do is this. If you support the channel today with a Streamlabs tip of $5 or more, and you have somebody you want me to cover and you want them included in this list, I'll do it. You make a $5 Streamlabs or Super Chat and tell me, David, I want to nominate this person and I'm going to DM you on Instagram with the details and the pictures or whatever it is, or I'm gonna email you, right? If you wanna do that, I will accept your nomination. At this stage, at this late stage, you could nominate someone extra and we'll go into it and we'll react to what they did or your DMs or whatever it is you want me to look at and they'll be included and they'll be on the list to be voted for, all right? I think that's fair enough. I think you're supporting me that way. I mean, your $5 is just straight back into the channel. So it's not like it's, it's, like, it's, it's literally, you're, you're paying for your own entertainment and for, your, for the work that I do when you do this, right? So it's a pretty good investment and it allows us to, you know, make sure that we only get the real serious people, the ones who really, really want their person on that nominate, nominees list. So it helps me out as well to filter that out. So consider that, guys. The link is in the pinned comment. The link is also in the description to do that if you want to do that. It'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. I'd love to go through some of your, your crazy DMs and stuff like that if you have them. Right then. Who's ready to get into the nominations for this year's Meat Flakes of the Year? Meat Flake of the Year 
awards. <laughs> if you're ready to get the meat flakes going, I want you to put in the live chat right now. Bring on the meat flakes. Bring on the meat flakes, and we'll kick off with our first meat flake of the day. And I'm gonna have to put my headphones on right now. And it sucks because look, I mean, oh, I mean, a few of you said looking sharp. I mean, I dressed up for this, you know. I really made effort. I got, I got my haircut for this, yeah. But now I gotta put these bad boys on. Otherwise, I can't hear anything. What a shame, huh? Does it work with the look? Does it work? No. <laughs> it does not work with the look. Oh well. I mean, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. Streamer life. <laughs> it's how, it's how it has to be, guys. Let's kick off this year's Meat Flakes of the Year 2022. Now, our first Meat Flake contender, our first nominee, you all know him, right? He is arguably king of the Meat Flakes, probably the most long-standing and outspoken Meat Flake the world has ever seen. He consistently, consistently Meat Flakes everywhere, nonstop, been doing it for years, all right? He's done amazing work for veganism and, and animal rights too because he has shown hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, what a man baby looks like, okay? Like a massive man baby. He doesn't only cry about vegans. He cries about a whole host of things. He cries about the royal family, cries about Meghan Markle, cries about climate activists, cries about... Honestly, the amount of people he's cried about, the amount of things he's cried about, it is just non-stop, all right? King Meat Flake, it is, we're kicking off with, the one, the only, the complete and utter spoon, the numptiest of numpties. We're kicking off with Piers Morgan. Or as we're going to refer to him for this section, Piers Moron. And guys, if you want to vote for Piers Morgan, as the meat flake of the year 2022, you've got to use the code Piers Moron, all right? You can vote from now, okay? The voting for Piers Moron starts right now, and whilst you're thinking about whether he deserves it or not, we're going to take a look at exactly what he did, the worst thing he did this year, to put him in the standing, to put him in the nominations for meat flake of the year 2022. So, that's not the screen I wanted. Here it is. Now, Obviously, we're short on time, okay, guys? We don't have all the time in the world, so I've tried to pick out the most fundamental key moments of these meat flakes to, to show exactly why they are included here and why you guys should vote for him. I've, I see a question from Anton Show who says, can you vote uh, later? You can vote later. It's okay to do that. You just need to remember uh, what the code was, all right? Or, of course, you can you can ask. It's okay. It's not we're not it's not super strict, okay, guys. You, you can you can ask what the code was. We're not just going to move on and forget about it, all right. So yeah, you can vote now or you can vote later. You can vote from now for Piers Moron, all right. Let's take a look at what happened here. So let me give you the, the give you the lowdown. If you haven't seen this before, we're skipping the first bit of the video. Now, animal rebellion activists spray painted Big Ben, Big Big Ben in England. You know the the big um, Ben, <laughs> the big clock in England. And they also spray painted some other stuff with uh, white paint. And they basically caused a little bit of a fuss. They were in the news. Piers Morgan got on an activist from Animal Rebellion named Zola and proceeded to interrupt her, not let her finish sentences, basically bully her on live TV. And, uh, and he did something at the end. And that's what we're showing here. This is towards the end of the video. And this this is firmly putting Piers more on in the standing for Meat Flake of the Year 2022. Just this, this moment right here that we're all going to watch together now one more time. <laughs> I'm sure you've all seen it a million times. So let's take a look at what Piers did. Why are you not talking about the most important issue that is facing our planet because today? Because it's rank hypocrisy, it is isn't not it? hypocrisy. I meet so many There's vegans who, who, who devour avocados and almonds and don't seem to realize it involves the slaughter of billions of bees. Both almonds and avocados are less damaging to the planet. Oh, they're less damaging. And what about how they get flown here from California? What they're about how they damaging. get trucked across they're Europe? Less, that study in Oxford, is, that is exactly what it is the about. Planet. No, anyway, it, look, it is, I'm starving, it's... and uh, you're not going to persuade me. And my response to you destroying all these things is to have a Big Mac. Because you know what? It's a free country, it's a democracy, and I'm allowed to eat meat, and I'm certainly allowed to eat meat when someone who kills bees to feed their avocado habit 
minds. What we're asking is for the government to support farm. And there it is. Piers Moron brings an activist onto his show, okay, to talk about what they're doing, why they're doing it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Has it all set up so that one of his one of his team goes out, buys a McDonald's, which is cold by now, let's be honest. The cold McDonald's is sat there waiting for him to do his bit so he can bully an activist who came on, an educated activist, by the way. She's very educated. She did a great job on, on there of trying to get her facts across, but unfortunately, she didn't shout, right? You have to shout when you're with peers. You can't, you can't get around them any other way. She's trying to educate. She's trying to be a teacher, trying to be a lecturer. She's studied a lot. It doesn't give her a chance to get a word in edgeways. And then what does he do? He eats a Big Mac in front of her because that's, that's the extent of Piers' intellectual prowess. He doesn't have it. He's not smart. He's not a smart man. He's a, I, I, I mean, I call him Piers Moron. I don't know quite how much of a complete moron he is, but he's definitely not very intelligent, is he? And then this is, this is, why, this is how he, why, why he did this. This is why he did it, all right? Epic meat flake moment. Epic example of what a meat flake does. Cannot keep up with the conversation, cannot keep up with the facts that are going through, the facts and the logic she's using. So resorts to just barefaced, immature, childish, crybaby actions like this, and just that's it. It eats a meat in front of a vegan. That's what he thinks. That that's his extent of his argumentation. And that's what one of the things, one of the many things that puts him in the standing for Meat Flake of the Year 2022. One of the many things. That puts him in, all right? Not only this, and we're not going to watch the other stuff, all right? Because as I said, we're short on time today. And Piers Morgan, he, we're not going to give him, we don't want to give him a, that much of this, you know? He's not that special. Although he is a massive meat flake. Massive meat flake numpty. We can't, we can't just spend all day looking at his crap. But what else has he done? Well, he ate steak in front of another animal, rebell animal rebellion activist. He's, this is just this year, that is... Um, I think he took on another activist this year, maybe. I don't know. This year, the stuff he's done previous years that also we could talk about, but just this year, those are the two main things he's done. Very anti-animal rebellion, very anti-veganism, says it whenever he gets a chance. Throughout the year, there's been multiple examples. Piers Moron, guys. Piers Moron for this year's 2022 Meat Flake of the Year. If you'd like to vote for him, you've got to put it in chat right now. Piers Moron. To vote for Piers Moron Morgan. <laughs> there we go. We're in. We're, we're in, guys. There were our first nomination behind us. There we go. Piers Moron. I've got a feeling, you know, he could take it away. But to be honest with you, there are actually good contenders today that could take Piers Moron on in a battle for Meat Flake of the Year 2022. I have so many good people here today. I have some you won't know about. I have some you will know about. And of course, don't forget, later on in the video, we are going to give some awards to some people who fight the Meat Flake. Some people that I think deserve recognition for fighting these idiots throughout the year. So we've got a lot to go, guys. Our next nominee is another grumpy old man. Actually, to be honest, if you squint a little bit, <laughs> It doesn't look that different from Piers Morgan, all right? He's got a little bit looser skin. I'd say he's a bit more chubby, I'd say. He's a little, he looks a bit older as well. But ultimately, they look pretty similar. <laughs> Ironically, both of them are kind of like... They say vegans are pasty-faced. These two, these two constantly look like they're out of breath, all right? And they both, they're both desperate for attention. And in Piers Morgan's case, give him credit where credit's due. He re remade himself, started a show. He was disgraced. He was, he was an embarrassment. Started a show, clawed himself back into the public eye, actually gained respect from a lot of people. Hate him or love him, whatever. You got to respect the grind. Yeah, he's, he's grinding. He's doing it, all right? This next guy, no. There's no grind. This guy is a disgraced TV presenter from the UK. And when I say disgraced, there was rumors that he hit someone, that he made loads of inappropriate comments, like he's a total... Rumors that he's a proper douchebag. Anyway, kicked out of the BBC, tried to start another show, failed. No one watched it. Everyone hated it. And now he's just getting left behind. He's getting older and older. No one cares about him anymore, but he's desperate for attention. So what does he do? He resorts to constant outlandish and stupid takes on lots of stuff, but recently, mainly veganism. And he's just trying desperately to stay in the news cycle because there is one thing you can do to stay in the news cycle in the UK or actually anywhere in the world is just 
give vegans shit. If you talk crap about vegans, you stay in the news, you stay in the, especially the conservative media, they will cover it like crazy. And actually the vegan media too, because it, it's, it's one way, you know, plant-based news is a very, very big media outlet. They cover it too. So if you want to stay relevant, just, just rip into vegans. This guy does that. He is a pathetic meat flake if you have ever seen one, okay? One of the most pathetic you, you'll see, desperate for attention. I'd like to introduce to you our next nomination, our next nominee, Mr. Jeremy Clarkson, okay? That's who he is. We're good. If you don't know who he is, this might give you a flavor of the kind of stuff he's been up to. Here's an interview he did where he made his thoughts and beliefs on vegans pretty damn clear. Oat milk has been scientifically proven to increase sex drive. Oat milk? Oat milk. Yeah. Nah. Yeah, interesting one. Those who prefer oat milk to milk, or almond milk to milk, or seeds and weeds to food, tend to be pallid, spotty, gaunt, anemic, <laughs> ill, politically weird, and get very little sex as a result of those things. So it's saying almond milk, no, oat milk. Oat milk has scientifically proven to increase sex drive. Yeah, sex drive, so they may want it more, interesting. They're not going to get it because they're obviously mad because <laughs> they're drinking milk that isn't milk. So I think, yeah, your sex drive would be increased because you're not having sex if you drink milk that isn't milk. The answer to that? Mm -hmm. It's false. False. They don't have a higher they sex drive. They don't have a higher sex drive. I was going to say something that would have got me into <laughs> terrible trouble, then, but I didn't. So there you go. Say that's the man. And that's just one example of the kind of silly things he's been saying. I do love the absolute irony of... This <laughs> clearly overweight, balding, grey, middle-aged man. <laughs> I mean, how can you comment on anyone else's appearance or, or whether they're having sex or not when I don't think he's seen his own pecker in a couple of years? I mean, when he looks down, he does not see it. I, I promise you, he does not see it. So I, I call this projection. Uh, I, I absolutely call this projection. Uh, this is Mr. Jeremy Clarkson. He is quite famous in England. And, and I, for Top Gear, if you know Top Gear, the, the car series, that's what got him super famous. And now he's famous for making brain dead takes like this constantly. But with that was only one minute, all right? That's not all we've got for Jeremy Clarkson. Actually, here he is here doing something else. This is not the only thing he's been up to, guys. Before we get to that, let me just read that super chat out. Um, Julie Kelsey says, Happy New Year's, David. What was that? New shirt design's coming. Take care. You're amazing. Don't stop swearing. Thank you so much, Julie. I am trying to tone down the swearing a little bit because I'm realizing that YouTube will not... <laughs> basically, YouTube will reduce the amount of like reach and stuff that the videos get, I'm hearing, if there's like too much swearing and stuff. So I am trying to reduce a little bit, but I appreciate, I appreciate the... Message. I appreciate the support. I, I, I am gonna. I'm gonna use things other than swear words and like numpty and lemon and stuff like that. I did enjoy using those a bit more. Maybe the C bombs will make a comeback, a glorious comeback at some point. But thank you so much for the super chat, legend. Right. Let's kick off then. What has he done? Well, let me give you some. Give me some background on Jeremy Clarkson here. The a council in the UK. Okay, a local council, Oxford to be exact. They decided to bring in a new policy that said. You cannot eat, uh, they're basically they're only serving vegan food from now on. That's what they decided to do. Inside the government buildings, they're only gonna serve vegan food. It was for a, uh, like environmental reasons, not for animal reasons. Environmental reasons, only vegan food from now on. While you're working here, go out, get your lunch somewhere else if you don't wanna eat vegan food. But here you're gonna eat, me, eat vegan food, all right? Jeremy Clarkson came out and protested. This is a, this is a famous person, right? He's a famous man. He's like multimillionaire. And he came out and, and tried to start a protest movement to stop the council from serving vegan food in their offices and to, to try to bring back non-vegan food in the offices of the council. What did I say to you earlier about being desperate to stay relevant? Well, it, here it is. Here's him talking to some random guy with a, with a phone camera <laughs> using his, <laughs> filming him on a phone because <laughs> he's so desperate for attention. A vegan came to my house and he would scrape the potato off the top of the satisfier and they would have that <laughs> because it's good manners. Let's get to it. 
why, why are you here today, sir? Well, I think it's important that um, farmers are heard. And, you know, the idea that you don't give people choice doesn't seem to me to be fair. Fair in what way? Well, if you say to somebody, you can only eat weeds and seeds, that's being dictatorial. Why not say to somebody, except you, if a vegan came to my house, I would scrape the potato off the top of the satisfy and they would have that, because <laughs> it's good manners. And so when the council's come to vote on this motion today, what, what's your message? What do you want to, to go through their heads? Allow people to have choice. Don't believe for a minute in the, all of the environmental messages about um, farm animals, because they are all necessarily so. There's a lot of truth here, though. Thank you very much. That's pretty much it, guys. So basically, yeah, he said, like, give people a choice. They have a choice to leave the building and eat somewhere else. You know, absolutely mental. So here he is, grumpy old man. We're going to call the code for voting for Jeremy Clarkson is Jeremy Flake Clarkson. If you think, I think he deserves a run at this because, look, he said vegans don't have any sex. He says we're all pasty, skinny, anemic. And he tried to, to protest. <laughs> he tried to protest against the local council serving vegan food only. And said they, oh, they don't, they don't have a right, they don't have the right to have a choice, as if they're people, uh, they're being discriminated against or something, as if these people are suffering for starvation or something. Jeremy Flake, Jeremy Flake Clarkson, all right, Jeremy, Jeremy Flake, it's hard to say, Jeremy Flake Clarkson, if you want to vote for him, all right. I'm, I'm not seeing many of you guys think he's, you don't think he's worthy of it. Well. He's no Piers Morgan, I, I guess, but I mean, Piers Morgan hasn't gone quite far, that far with the insults, so this guy's gone pretty far with the insults, and in the UK, he's pretty influential on, on old, old grumpy knobheads, so you know, there's a good reason to vote for him, okay, guys? There is a reason to vote for him, but I don't see any of you voting for him. That's really interesting. All right, then, all right, then. A bit boring and too dry, apparently. All right, well, hey, look, guys. We've got more to come, and you you know from the thumbnail that there's more there's more spicy things to come, and and so so you know okay okay we started strong, we started strong, but you weren't you weren't convinced with this guy. That's all right. We've got more spicy stuff to come. Let's let's jump. Let's you know what? Let's just let's just go for it then. All right. Maybe that was a bad nomination. Okay, lots of you guys voted for him by the way. Don't put this on me. Don't put this on me. It's on you guys. <laughs> you guys voted for this guy. I'm just I'm just doing what you wanted. All right. But it's okay, it's okay, because the next guy, we're kicking things up a notch with the next guy, all right? This next man is Joey Carbstrong's arch nemesis. <laughs> right? He's the only meat flake who has ever dared to actually threaten Joey Carbstrong, a vegan activist, in public, and threaten, threaten him, physically threaten him, threaten to actually do something to him in public, in front of all people, in front of cameras, he knew he was being filmed, and there was even policemen walking around the area because it was at a football game, right? This guy, you could say he was brave for doing this. You could say, you could say he was <laughs> fierce, like a lion, courageous, right? I say he's possibly the stupidest meat flake of 2022, possibly the most idiotic meat flake of 2022. Allow me to introduce who I'm calling, for the sake of today, Stabby Simon, okay, the man who threatened, 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 the man who threatened to stab Joey Carbstrong <laughs> over vegan chicken bites, right? This we're going to take a look at. So here we go. So let me give you the context about this one, all right? Joey Carbstrong's on the street with VFC, vegan fried chicken bites, right? Giving them out to people for free. This guy comes over, tries one, says, it's all right. He's not that impressed. He knows something's going on, okay? He knows something's up. Something fishy's going on. It's not speciesist, right? No, fish smell funky, okay? Something funky's going on. It's not speciesist, right? All good. So, so he's like, nah, it's, it's all right. Then Joey tells him it's not chicken. It's vegan chicken. All hell breaks loose. I've cut to the chase. I've cut to the most spicy bit. Let's have a look. Yeah, but why are you calling it chicken? But you liked it, so it didn't harm you. You don't have the right to appropriate the name from a chicken. <laughs> to use. the name from Yes. So what's worse, appropriating a name or stabbing a chicken in the throat? Well, you guys are acting as if you're no, the I'm higher creed. I'm asking you a question. You didn't answer it. What? What's worse, appropriating the name chicken or stabbing a chicken with a knife and eating them? 
You guys want to change. No, no, you no, have no, to no, sell the message second, and you have to change What's, your no, language. You you and the then question. you will actually answer the win. Question. Answer the question. But if you keep on saying you can't answer that you're the... What? Answer the question. What? Now, before we get to the main <laughs> event, Stabby Simon, right? That's what you're going to do to vote for this guy. Stabby Simon to vote for this guy. Here we go. It's worse, appropriating the name chicken or stabbing a chicken with a knife and killing them. What would be really enjoyable now is to stab you in the neck. Stab me in the neck? <laughs> well, that's not, that's not bad. Uh, using words is offensive, but stabbing people is fine. You took it to another level there. You're going to stab me over a... You're going to stab me over some vegan chicken, bra. He's shouting, change the language, change the language. He just threatened to stab him. I mean, who needs to change their language? God, that was... He was the gift that kept on giving. <laughs> Oh, you've already threatened me, mate, so why are you coming back over? You. you already threatened me, mate, to stab me, so, so why are you coming back over? I didn't so walk over to us all like, aggressive? You. I said I would like to. <laughs> I would like yeah, to. Yeah, but you're well, walking over offensive. Uh, don't, you, don't, don't direct anything aggression towards her. Sorry, oh. you, you were being very kind of don't do, No, I'm saying stereotypical. don't direct. Nobody asked me for permission to take me. It's a public place. Go look up the laws, buddy. You're you threatening can... to stab me in the throat, mate. I didn't threaten to stab you in the throat, you said. You did say that. So you were so offended by vegan chicken that you're now... No, I wasn't now, offended by the chicken. I'm not yeah. offended by it. Just change the names and you guys will win. No. How about this? No. How's that? We took the eye out and it's got like a little E and there's a little... We took the E out, actually. So if, if you're more offended by this in slaughterhouses, then we've got a big problem in the world. No. Oh, uh, can you tell me who your data protection officer is? Oh, yeah, his name's uh, Officer... Um, don't stab me in the throat, please, mate. <laughs> no, actually, no, this is a serious legal question. You want to talk about laws and you just said, I'd like to stab you in the neck. No, I've asked you a question and you are required to give me an answer. No. Well, I think you are required to stop breaching the peace and move I'm on. I'm not breaching any peace. Because you might get offended by more vegan food. I know, no. you, I know you're a bit I of a... I want to know... You're a bit of a snowflake. Who do I contact <laughs> to get a copy of uh, the data that... He's a meat flake is what he is, Joey. ...chained on me, which I'm uh, entitled to. You can, call, you can call the police. No, actually, no, you... can call you... the police to get any data you want Who? From. Who are you guys? You have to call the London police. I don't. I have to ask you, and you are refusing to tell me yeah. who you are, where you store the data, and you are refusing to give me a copy. Where's the data? That's the data. Uh, we, we're done with you now. Move along, please. We're done with you. We've got to hand out this. We've got jobs to do. We've got work to do. You've got a game to watch? You've got a Chelsea game to watch? So you've just assaulted me. You put your hand in it. <laughs> Snowflake City. <laughs> Snow Snowflake City. <laughs> You have no idea what you've just turned on. Oh, damn. Uh, I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> Want to try some? Vegan guy, right? Unbelievable, huh? Unbelievable. It just, it, just got, it just kept going, didn't it? It got better and better and better. I've watched that a few times, you know. It's just, oh, it's just absolutely brilliant. Okay, so, Stabby Simon for Meat Flake of the Year 2022. I mean, look, I'll give you it. The last guy, Jeremy Clarkson, yeah, I mean... Compared to this guy, compared to Piers Morgan, all right, fair play, fair play. Maybe it was a bit of a dud nomination. I give you that, I give you that. But come on, come on, this guy. He's got to be close to Piers, surely closer to Piers on votes. Stabby Simon. Stabby Simon, the Chelsea fan, who wants to stab Joey in the neck over vegan chicken, and then says he assaulted him when he taps him on the shoulder. Come on. If there's ever been a more textbook definition of what a meat flake is, a meat flake, like a combination of snowflake and meat eater offended by vegans, how can this guy not be the one? How can this guy not be it? Honestly, if you guys don't vote for this guy, if you guys do not vote for this guy, I don't know what I, I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't know what's real anymore. Come on. He's got he's gotta compete with peers. He's gotta compete with peers. I want him to be the winner so bad. <laughs> I want him to be the winner so bad, guys. All right, Stabby Simon, guys. Get voting, get voting. Do you know what? We're taking things up, though. We're, we're, we're going to continue with the high pace stuff right now because our next nomination, our next nomination, he's not quite as angry or violent as this guy, right? He's not quite as... Oh, thank you so much, DJ Lernell. Thank you. Says, says $10 tip and says, thank you for all you do for animal rights. You legend. Thank you so, so much. Really appreciate that, you absolute... Legend, you hero. Thank you. Now, right, the next guy. He's not violent. He's not aggressive. All right? But he is very, very embarrassing. Very, very cringe. I'll give you a hint, right? I'll ask you all a question right now. Have you ever tried a vegan sausage? 
that tasted so good that you were like, nah, this isn't a vegan sausage. Maybe it's in a restaurant. You get yourself a nice vegan breakfast. You're like, they've messed up. They've messed up. They're giving me meat sausage, right? They've mixed my order up. Has it ever happened? It's happened to me. I've been munching down on something. I'm like, this, this, this. I don't buy it, right? I call them over. Like, is this, is this, is this definitely the vegan? They look at it and they're like, yeah, it's the vegan one. Of course, it's the vegan. What the hell's wrong with you? I'm like, it's just so meaty. I don't understand. Like, these things are getting so good. I just don't buy it. But anyway, right. I've had it happen to me. I'm sure you've had it happen to you as well. Okay. Our next guy, our next nomination, nominee, whatever, definitely has happened. Had it happen to him? Definitely, it's happened to him. It actually happened to him in front of millions of people on live TV. Because the next guy we're going to show is the sausage expert from the Jeremy Vine TV show over in the UK. Now, if you don't know what this guy did or who he is, one second, why is that little yeah, thing spinning around? There we go. If you don't know who he is, what he did, Jeremy Vine show in the UK is a live show where they just, I think it's just a chat show, basically. Some people call in sometimes and... And they had Joey on doing some stuff once uh, over the phone, like debating with them and stuff like that. They kind of talk about current topics and just, it's like a morning show, I think. Uh, yeah, it is a morning show. But anyway, it's a live show. So this is what happened live on this show. Well, this guy, I mean, I, I don't need to explain it. The whole video explains it. We're going to get into our next nomination, our next nominee, which is this guy you see right on the screen right now. I believe his name is Mike Parry. Um, and to vote for this guy... I want you to use the code my vegan sausage. If you think after watching this video, if you think this guy deserves meat flake of the year 2022, I want the vote. The thing you have to type is my vegan sausage. All right, <laughs> my vegan sausage. Let's have a look. What did he do? Why does he deserve it? Here is two sandwiches. Okay, and uh, I'm going to give them to to Mike. And one so one sausage. What? No, well, I can, do you know, I, we can bring one in for you. We weren't sure. I will do the sauce for you. You've got to tell me, right, yeah. of these, okay. which is the real meat sandwich. Easy. So which is the real... Now, before you do it, yeah. would yeah. you like tomato sauce or would you like no, brown sauce? No, that will, that will try and uh, disguise the true taste of a sausage okay. sandwich, okay? Show right. me which one the real meat one is, Okay. Mike. I'm going to take a bite out of each, people, OK? Yes. So I'm now taking a bite of this one. Very nice bread, by the way, OK? <laughs> mm. We need sort of background music now. Mm. <laughs> mm. This is classic mm. TV, this. Yeah. OK. I would say that's... Um... Well, don't, don't, no, don't no, decide no, yet. No, just, no. just do a thing, you know. He's so rude, he's talking with his mouth. Me. Well, I think he feels <laughs> right. the pressure. I'll tell you what, that was the first one. I'm going to now... Yeah, cleanse, my cleanse mouth. the palate. We've got time here, don't worry. <laughs> Welcome to one of the most exciting shows on British TV. <laughs> OK. Now for the second one. Strictly's got nothing on this. OK. <laughs> Go on, Mike. It is absolutely obvious to me <laughs> this first one is the false sausage, OK? <laughs> right. That's not real sausage. That is cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> the second one is clearly the real sausage. I could taste the meat in it. Excuse me. It was luscious and lovely. Tasted a bit like the one I had this morning. <laughs> I could taste the meat in it. It was luscious and lovely. It tasted like the one I had this morning. Don't forget those words, guys. <laughs> this is the winner. OK, very interesting. What do you think? Do you think he's got it right? I mean, he's, he's a... I, he is the expert okay. on sausages, so I suspect he's probably got it right. I'm gonna t well, it's, it's, a, it's certainly, Mike, you did it with great conviction. Are you right? Is Mike right? Has he correctly identified the meat sausage? The answer is that the meat sausage <laughs> sandwich is actually down here, Mike. Mm -hmm. You've just eaten two vegan <laughs> sandwiches. <laughs> So you are, <laughs> I think, there we are, I'll keep, and you can, have your, you can have a meat sausage Thank right you. now as well. You, I think, are a vegan in disguise. Now, let's be clear right now. This moment itself, this isn't what makes him a meat flake, okay? He was tricked. It can happen to anyone, right? I don't blame him for thinking one was better than the other or whatever. You know, the, we, we, these things play tricks on us. It can happen, right? You do blindfold tests sometimes between the certain foods and stuff like that. You can get mixed up. It, look, I don't blame him for what he did here, right? It's great for vegan sausages, of course. 
But what happens now is what makes him a contender for Meat Flake of the Year 2022. What happens now really puts him up there with Piers and mm, Jeremy Clarkson. Okay, whatever, guys. Okay, not a good one. And with Stabby, McStabby Simon. <laughs> it puts him up there, okay? Now, if you want to vote for this guy, as you watch this, if you're like, he deserves it, Meat Flake of the Year 2022, my vegan sausage is what you've got to say. Let's watch. Not at all. <laughs> What a what an underhanded, <laughs> downright <laughs> rotten trick to pull on a man whose reputation now is the great sausage butty king ruined. <laughs> what well, how do you feel that mis mistake was made though? I mean you you well, you've tasted sausage, right? All I can say is that that's cardboard and that's sort of almost cardboard. <laughs> almost oh. cardboard. Call it tissue paper. He just said it was luscious and lovely. He could taste the meat in it, and it was just like the one he had this morning. And now that they found out they're both vegan, it's cardboard and tissue paper. Now I shall take a bite out of the real yeah, sausage. Yeah, you can have that. All right, okay. you can and see. have that with a clear conscience. That was very interesting. Mm. I'm presuming mm, you would rather probably. have a, a real sausage than a vegan sausage, Continues, correct? Though. I would rather have a real sausage. However... Yes. I do think there is an argument for vegan food. Let's not forget, we were just talking about climate change. One yeah. of the things you can do to help climate change is to eat a bit less meat. And I think one of the reasons why people are making so much fuss is because um, farmers are making, or meat no, producers... No, that wasn't are... actually my bad. <laughs> but anyway, OK, so that that's the meat flake... I thought you said something else for some reason. That's the meat flake moment, all right, that this guy... <laughs> he goes from loving it, luscious, lovely, taste the meat in it, just like the one I had at home. The second he finds out it's vegan, he turns into a massive meat flake numpty, so it tastes like tissue paper and cardboard, and all of a sudden he doesn't like it. It is, it is beyond, look, he's like, what, how old is he? 55, 60? And he turns into a massive child the second that veganism and animal rights comes up. One of the hallmarks of a meat flake, of a true meat flake, is when they turn into a little crybaby, man babies, when this stuff comes up. It is, it is predictable, so predictable, to the point where, you know, when Nathan McGovern from Animal Rebellion went on Piers Morgan's show, he knew, he knew this, old, this, this grumpy old man was going to be so predictable with his crybaby arguments that he made vegan bingo and predicted everything he said. That's how predictable these meat flakes are, all right? So, if you want to vote for this guy, this vegan sausage numpty, you gotta put my vegan sausage to vote for this numpty. I think it's it's just it's a beautiful example of a meat flake. This guy and Stabby Simon combined, they just really bring in every element of what makes a meat flake. They capture the essence of meat flake, true essence of meat flake. Actually, do you know what? If I was to ever <laughs> if I was to ever start my own perfume brand, I might call it essence of meat flake or essence of meat flake tears, maybe. Would you guys buy that? I don't know, you wouldn't wear it, would you, really? You could offer it to people, maybe, who who um, um, like are being meat flakes. You could say, hey, oh, I got you something for, for Christmas, a late Christmas present. There you go. It's essence of meat flake because you should wear it because you're a massive meat flake. You might as well smell like one. I don't know what it would smell like, to be honest with you, but yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I see a few of you asking, where can we vote? You vote right here in the live chat. Right here in the live chat. We've got, we've got a, a team a large team of people who have been paid a lot of money, guys, to count your votes, okay? They're working nonstop. They're answering the phones, because I don't know why, but they're answering phones, and they're also watching the live chat, okay? Um, these big team of people that, that I definitely hired and paid loads and loads of money to do this, and it's definitely, it's definitely not Annie in the other room. It's not Annie in the other room just counting your votes, all right? Um, this, that's not what it is. It's, it's a team of people because this is a professional awards ceremony. That's why I'm wearing a blazer and why there's a, there's a solid gold um, award to be given out. All right? That, that's, that's, that's what's going on. Yeah? So, okay. <laughs> all right. My vegan sausage. I just, I just, I mean, yeah, you should vote just, just so you can say my vegan sausage in the chat, I think. And remember, guys, we're, we're around halfway through right now. And I just want to make sure to remind you here that if you do have someone that you want to bring in, that you know I'm not going to include, someone from your own DMs, someone from your own Twitter account, your own Instagram account, your own Facebook, someone you found that you think is, is such a meat flake, but they're not famous. I don't know who they are. 
right? But you, you are sure that they can compete with the likes of Piers Morgan, Stabby Simon, and this sausage guy. If you think they can, okay, I'm not going to take them from the live chat, okay? But if you send through a super chat or a Streamlabs tip, okay, using the link in the pinned comment, with $5 or more and your recommendation, you, I will cover it. You can email me the screenshots. You can DM me on Instagram if you want the screenshots. And I will include them in this list. You can have your own personal meat flake included in this list with the likes of Piers Morgan and these other numpties to be considered by, by with, with, with all the others, right? Right here on the stream with a five, $5 or more uh, super chat or Streamlabs tip and send me the information. And remember, every single one of your donations, tips, every single one of them, the money just goes back into the channel, right? It all comes back here. It all goes into the work that I'm doing. So it's a win-win for everybody. Literally everybody wins, all right? I'm actually curious to see if any of you guys have some really solid meat flake in, in your DMs or something, or in your comments or something like that. I'd, I'd love to see if, if any of you are thinking about it and we can see how they measure up compared to some of these others. It could be a video too, by the way, guys. It could be a video, Instagram, wherever it is. We can get the video up. We can do it, all right? So keep that in mind. Next guy. Most, it is it actually, do you know what I've just realized? It is all men. <laughs> I mean, that just tells you they're the biggest meat flakes, you know? Unfortunately, it, 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 yeah, I say unfortunately because I'm a guy too, and I'd, I'd rather we had a bit of a split, but the biggest meat flakes out there are men. What, what can we do about it, right? Well, the next guy is just one more grumpy old man, all right? So I'll ask you this question. This might give it away. Who is this our next nomination? Well, let me ask you this. Does being a renowned astrophysicist mean that you're smart? Does it mean you're smart? I mean, you'd assume yes, and you'd be right. It does mean you're smart. It means you are you're very capable of understanding astrophysics, right? You, all different elements of physics, most likely. You, you, you're, you're a good scientist. You're very smart when it comes to this, these, these scientific things, right? Because it's difficult concepts to grasp by astrophysics and stuff like that, right? I get that. But does it mean that you're immune from being a massive meat flake? No, it does not. Our next nominee proves that point beautifully. That intelligence does not mean that you're immune from being a massive meat flake. Because this guy, he's written a book drenched in meat flake nonsense. He's posted tweets saying that cows are only good. Their only purpose is to become steak because he's such a lovely person. And he's just been on the Joe Rogan podcast with some of the most high-level meat flakery I have ever seen. The most convoluted, ridiculous stuff coming out of someone's mouth about animal rights and veganism I've ever seen. Our next nominee is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Or if you're voting for him today, okay, it's Neil the Ass Tyson. In the comments, in the live chat, to vote for Neil deGrasse Tyson, Neil the Ass Tyson. Why does he deserve this? Well, I mentioned some of the stuff he's done, but I think the most clear example of his meat flakery nonsense comes from this Joe Rogan interview uh, that happened recently, all right? We're gonna take a look at some of the stuff he's claiming, and this stuff's from his book, by the way, so he literally wrote a book on this stuff, which is just madness, all right? Let's have a watch. He's talking about, if you wanna save animals, um, I never seen I've never seen anyone say save the leeches. No, or, no one cares about bugs. Save the ticks. In particular, parasites. Save the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, you know, the biggest enemy of humans, as big an enemy as we are to each other through warfare in the history of civilization, <laughs> the greatest enemy to human life has been the mosquito. Responsible for more than a billion human deaths in the history of civilization. And so here we have mosquitoes, ticks, uh, tapeworms, you know, go down the list and you can ask if you're really into animals and don't want to kill them, if you heard that ticks were endangered, would you start a movement to protect ticks? W would you do that? And if you would, uh, more power to you. But I'm thinking you're not. Why would you if you know about Lyme disease? This is my point. 
Yeah, or this, this is my point. I mean, by the way, the Lyme virus wants to live too, right? right. These, these are all creatures on God's green earth, right? Mm -hmm. Viruses, guys. Viruses have feelings, and so do ticks. We have to consider viruses and ticks in the same breath as a as a cow or a pig, because at the end of the day, they're exactly the same, right? A tick has the same, uh, you know, complete cognition and awareness and sentience and all these different feelings and emotions as a cow, and so does a virus. That that's the point. That's the point that renowned astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson is making here. That, that basically he's trying to say vegans are hypocrites because we wouldn't start a movement for ticks, but we do stand up for the rights of, of, of other animals, like cows, pigs, and sheep, and chickens, all of which are sentient with families and emotions and feelings and, and actually are bred into existence in the billions and billions and billions a year, unlike ticks, uh, which, uh, as I'm aware, as far as I'm aware, I'm not exploited or bred for, for anything like this. So, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, we're going to continue to see what more absolute, amazing scientific discoveries Neil Vyas Tyson made during this, uh, during the writing of his book. Now, it, it, it's, I just, I'm not even going to spoil it for you. Neil Vyas Tyson to vote for this absolute numpty. Mm -hmm. And so, so you end up being a species bigot. Mm. Th that's in the chapter meatarians and vegetarians. Species bigot. Uh, there's the the philosophies that are that each of those camps will embrace, and the question is how thoroughly thought through are those philosophies? Like in one example, let's say you don't want to kill animals, and, but you uh, so you you have a humane mousetrap in your basement. Okay, why not? You don't want to snap the neck of the mouse. That's that's cruel, you and you and you like animals, right? So you save the mouse. You got to check on it every few days because they dry out quickly if you trap it. So, and so, what do you do when you catch it? What what do they do? Release them. release it back into the wild, guaranteeing the mouse gets eaten whole by an owl or pecked apart by all manner of woodland predators between nine and eighteen months of its life. Now, this claim that he made, I watched the video of this uh, Danny made, Lifting Vegan Logic, and Danny points out r very correctly that he makes a lot of claims here and doesn't substantiate any of them with any evidence at all. He's just plucking this stuff out of thin air and uh, speaking about it as if it's true. And you'll see that this is a method we've seen before, right? It's something that Sadhguru does. You speak with pauses, okay? And it makes what you're saying more believable, because it sounds like you're very sure about what you mean. For example, what people don't realize is the sky, we all look at it during the day, right? It's blue. Or is it? Because actually it's been proven that what we see as blue is actually fluorescent green. Now, yeah, it's, yeah. That's just the way it is. And so what could that tell us about the way we view life and things? Well, it tells us that we don't always have all the answers. And we should consider that we maybe don't know everything we think we do. See what I mean? It works, right? It works. Do you believe me? Do you think the sky is green, really, and not blue? And all the blue that we see is really fluorescent green? I bet some of you are thinking, this sounds pretty convincing. This is all it takes. Get a nice microphone, speak very slowly, and understand how to sound convincing. And you can do what Neil the Ass Tyson is doing right now. Well, let's see what else he's got. And if he... I think at this point, a lot of you have voted, but some of you are holding back. I think by the end of this clip, you're going to vote for Neil the Ass Tyson to compete with the other meat flakes we've seen so far. For Meat Flake of the Year 2022, let's, let's see what else he's got. So the safest thing to do with your mouse is to leave it in your basement. <laughs> if, that's, if you really care about animal life and the mouse managed to get into your basement, leave it there. It'll live up to six years in uh, your basement. I lived in Colorado for a while next to an ashram. And I was visiting the ashram and talking to the woman who runs it, and she sprayed Raid all over these ants. And I go, what are you doing? And she's like, well, it's unfortunate, but 
you know, we, we have to address the fact that we have an infestation of insects. I'm like, you just mass killed all these living beings. Right. I think that's, that is so messed up. I, I, I have to agree with Joe Rogan here that, that somebody running an ashram, which is Buddhism, it's like a Buddhist, they clearly don't understand Buddhism if they're just literally spraying bug killer all over ants. They clearly have not understood what Buddhism is. So I actually agree with Joe Rogan on this, but it, it's, it's not, well, look into it. With poison from the sky. <laughs> And you did it in front of me. Aerial assault. While you're espousing the benefits of Buddhism and oh. meditation. and Yeah, so people kind of cherry pick. Yeah. And, and I understand it, but and I don't, it's odd. I don't mind if someone cherry picks as long as they're completely self-aware. Most people it. aren't. And by the way, the home that where you're saving the mouse, uh, I did a, a rough calculation. It's... It's probably made from the wood of about 50 trees. Mm. Each tree could have lived 100 years, but didn't because it was cut down to make your home. Unbelievable. The, the two by f you know the studs, the, the two by fours, the the floorboards, the the wall panels, the you know the the siding, and each of those trees was home to birds and insects and fungus and squirrels and uh, and every day of that tree's life via photosynthesis, it created 15 times the mass of the mouse in breathable oxygen. So I ask you, who do you think nature cares more about? So I'm going to stop him there. So yeah, he goes into plants have feelings, trees have feelings, we shouldn't, they go into all about, actually, you know what, let's continue with it. Because they go the for tree, tree sentience, let's get to or that your bit. one ounce mouse. Probably the tree. I'm thinking. And some trees live a thousand years. Well, have you paid attention to some of the new research that's being done about how trees communicate with I'll each other? Yeah, I get to that. That's, mm. in, that's in that chapter, the mm. Nectarians and Vegetarian chapter. So, so trees are fascinating. Mm. I've heard people say, well, the mouse has a beating heart, and the tree does not, or plants do not, and animals do. And I said to my, well, let me think this through. If you cloak a tree, does it not suffocate? If you cut a tree, does it not bleed? If you cut off its nutrients at the base, does it not wither and die? Well, when they're aware they're being eaten, they release plant defense I'm chemicals. There. I'm getting there. All I'm saying is the tree gets nutrients from the soil to the topmost leaf. It does it <laughs> oh, not <man>. for <clears throat> want of a beating heart. It does it in spite of not having one. Right. It has a circulation. It just has a different it's where I way get of my, life. It, it's, it's where I get my maple syrup from tree blood <laughs> <laughs> all right so he has to get a vote guys neil the ass tyson goes from all of this all of this nonsense because he wants to eat meat and doesn't want to feel guilty he wants to eat and abuse animals for dairy for eggs for clothing for entertainment most likely and to eat their dead bodies so he goes through he wants to talk about tick rights the rights of ticks the rights of bacteria, the rights of mosquitoes, and the rights of trees. He goes through all of this. He wrote bits of his book on this, all because he's a massive meat flake and can't and won't stop eating, abusing and eating animals and animal products because he likes them. He, he, he has to take, take something very simple, which is look at what we do to all these animals. Look at how we breed them. Look at how we abuse them. We know they feel pain, we know they're sentient, we know they have families. We, we know that given the opportunity, they act and behave just like a dog, just like a cat, just like any pet you'd have at home. We know all this stuff, okay? Let's maybe switch to eating plant-based. Neil deGrasse Tyson, well, well, I mean, it's not that simple. Why don't we talk about mosquitoes and ticks and trees? Because trees bleed, trees bleed. Did you notice the way he said that, all that stuff? You say you 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 come, what do they you cloak the tree and it suffocates. You cut the tree and it bleeds. It's like you are the biggest meat flake, one of the most highly educated meat flakes on the planet. Absolutely pathetic, beyond beyond the levels of pathetic meat flakery. This this is like educated meat flakery. It's like what happens when a meat flake has a degree in something very complicated, basically, right? Unbelievable. Neil the ass Tyson. 
Vote for Neil the Ass Tyson with Neil the Ass Tyson in the live chat right now. Air Melly, thank you so much for your uh, tip. Says, I give a vote for all the grumpy men. Well, that's everyone. <laughs> that's everybody in the list. Mostly old grumpy men. Neil the Ass Tyson. Oh my good God. What an idiot, man. I mean, oh, how could anyone take anything he says seriously after all that, huh? I mean, it's it's the cadence too. That, that as somebody put in the chat, the TED Talk cadence. It's the sad guru cadence as well. It's what they use when they want to make, it's what they use when they know what they're saying is nonsense, but if they can say it with just enough charisma and slow pace and a deep voice, then they can make you believe in it. And it's, I, I, I've said this a few in a few videos, I think I need to start doing it. I need to start doing it because it works. I mean, people sit on Joe Rogan and he's like, yeah, man. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. And it's like, okay, well, maybe I should start doing it in my videos then. If it works that well, maybe I will. Maybe I'll make a few spoof, a few skits with it and see how they go, right? But we're not done yet, guys. We've got another one, two, three, four, five, six meat flakes to go. And they're good ones. They're good ones. We're going to stick with the, uh, excuse me. <laughs> that was grim. Nothing came out, all right? I've just got this like weird... Do you know when your nose gets blocked at the top and there's nothing there? There's nothing there. There's nothing going to pop out. You don't need to blow your nose, but it just kind of gets stuck and it kind of like feels like, I don't know, there's a flap there and you just go and it just opens, right? You know what I mean? I just did that. That's what I did, right? Don't judge me. <laughs> Sometimes I forget I'm like live streaming and <laughs> you guys see everything that I'm doing. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, let's be professionals. Let's get back into it. The next nominee, the next nomination. All right, now this guy. This guy is also a doctor, a doctor, a veterinary doctor. Have you ever been asked for your opinion on veganism? All right, only for the person asking you to start attacking you when you answer them. Has that ever happened to you guys? So someone says, hey, David, um, whatever, whatever your name is, your name's not David. What, hey, you, your name, <laughs> tell me. Answer me this question about veganism. And you're like, hey, okay, yeah, sweet. So here's the answer. And then they're like, offended, very upset with you. Yes, it must have happened to everybody in the room, I'm sure. Well, this veterinary doctor took it to another level, okay? It's happened to me many times, but never, never quite as bad as this, all right? <laughs> Allow me to introduce you to Dr. Zoltan Zabo, who is a veter veterinarian, veterinary, veterinary doctor, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, with a big social media following on Instagram, about 60,000 people, I think more, 60,000 followers. If you want to find him, it's at Dr. Dot, uh, at Dr. Dot Zoltan. Dr. Dot Zoltan. Why have I included this guy? Only 60,000 followers. He's not like a big famous meat flake. Well, okay. Don't worry. I think you're going to, I think you're going to vote for this guy once you see what he did. All right. If you want to vote for this guy, as I explained what he did, just put in the chat. Dr. Meat Flake, okay? Dr. Meat Flake. Okay, let's go and see what he did. So, here's a post he made, okay? It's a long post, but I'll get through it quick. Somebody sent me this message after I posted a story of me carving a turkey during the Christmas lunch at our hospital. By the way, I had to take this from Facebook because, he, because of what happened, okay? What do you think? Are people working in vet hospitals? Must be vegan, must they be vegan? A few caveats, one. I believe in transparency, so please do not comment that it is okay to eat meat, but vets shouldn't post turkey carving on social media. Fair enough. Please keep the discussion civilized. Avoid ad hominem attacks. I suppose everybody who follows my account loves animals, and they would like to see less animal suffering. Again, fair enough. It should be uncontroversial that reducing industrial farming and global meat production would benefit the environment. On the other hand, the meat industry uses many plant byproducts humans cannot eat, which would be wasted and less fed to animals. Not so, not, not so, so fair enough, but... We can probably also agree that a meticulously planned and balanced vegan diet can be healthy under certain circumstances. Still, I have yet to see the scientific evidence that veganism is always the most optimal diet for every human. Now, okay, you might be able to pick out some, some anomalies and some people that it's not been optimal for, but, but there, is, there is plenty of evidence out there that it's an optimal diet for most people. But anyway, now here's what he said. Now here's the photo he posted with it. Ready? Somebody sent him this message. This is disappointing. 
Why choose to have some save some birds and not others? I came here for the education, but I don't think I'll stay here for the speciesism. Maybe it's best to just not show this on a platform that influences many. It's not a funny hashtag, and as a doctor, it's quite insensitive for you to do so. Say, so, and his hashtag was avian specialist because he's a veterinary doctor and he's cutting up an animal, a bird. So it's a pretty sick post, yeah. So that's the post. He asked people, "What is your opinion?" Now let's go through his his rules again. His rules were. No ad hominem attacks, okay? Be reasonable, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what did I do? I left a comment. I said, if someone wants to help animals, the absolute minimum they can do is stop paying people to breed, use, abuse, and kill them for a snack. So yes, vets should absolutely be vegan. I understand you were raised with traditions that involve eating animal products, but you can change to be better for animals. Come on, man, you can do it. Do you want to guess what happened? I got blocked. Immediately. And I suppose my comment got removed. Now, some of you, some of the more untrusting of you, may be asking, David, prove that you got blocked. So here we go. David, Instagram, sorry, not David. Instagram.com forward slash doctor. What was this? Was it Zl I can't remember, actually. Doctor dot, what was it? His first name? Zoltan. I almost put Zlatan. I'm thinking Ibrahimovic. Zoltan. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, wait a minute. I'm logged out. <laughs> oh, there's his page. Why, did the, why has Instagram logged me out? <laughs> hey, <laughs> hold up, guys. I'm logging back in. <laughs> oh, that's frustrating. Anyway, <coughs> it's funny that his account popped up. Oh, you're not going to. Here we go. Oh, look. I can't log in. I can't um, see his page. See that? Page not available. But you saw it there when I was logged out, didn't you? I am blocked for this comment. For this comment, he blocked me. After asking for advice, after asking what we thought about this post, he blocked me. Blocked me. Guys, is that not a recommendation? Is that not a good nomination for the Meat Flake of the year 2022? But it doesn't stop there. I said this on his Facebook. I said, hey Zoltan, I left reply to your questions on Instagram. I spent a good few minutes on making sure it was reasonable as per your request. I even tried to make it a bit inspirational for you. I just opened Instagram to find you blocked me and most likely deleted the comment. So my question is this, why ask for opinions if you're gonna delete and block the ones you don't like? Would you like to know what he did, guys? Yeah, he blocked me again. I don't have the proof. Again, I can go to the Facebook if you want, but you know, you've seen the proof, you know what's going on. So if you'd like to vote for this absolutely monstrous meat flake, a massive hypocrite, someone who is who is treating animals and then carving animals up. He's a vet, calling himself an avian specialist while cutting up a turkey and then blocking every single vegan, by the way, not just me, loads of other people messaged me and told me that he blocked them too for making similarly reasonable comments about him being a massive hypocrite, okay? So if you think Dr. Meatflake deserves the meat flake of the year 2022. He's not famous. He's no Piers Morgan in terms of fame, but I think he's just as much of a meat flake. Dr. Meat Flake in the comments right now. Dr. Meat Flake in the live chat right now for this absolute meat flake numpty. And also, let me add, if you would like to go and give this guy a, a piece of your mind in a, in a constructive way, he's Zoltan on Instagram. Go on and go over there and try, try and see how long you can last without being blocked, all right? But I think he deserves, come on guys, no one's voting for him. He deserves a vote. There we go. We got a few votes. Look, I know he's like small fry. All right. I know, but come on, come on. This is bad, right? We can't just have everyone being super famous. We've got to throw in a few of these, these small time meat flakes. <laughs> they deserve it too, you know, they deserve some attention. Right. That was cringe. Okay. That was a cringe nomination. That was just, abs I mean, I've, I don't think I've ever seen somebody ask for a vegan advice and then block every vegan who gives them advice. It's just, wow. Wow. All right. But the next, the next <laughs> nomination, this is epic levels of cringe. This is phenomenal. All right. Every single person watching the stream, all of you, unless you're a Buddha, you all wish that certain events in your life didn't happen. Okay, I, I do too. We all have things that, I don't know, we upset us, embarrassed us, 
something that we wish we could just go pop, delete, delete. Let's get rid of that from our memories. Let's get rid of it. Okay, let's, it shouldn't have happened. I don't, I don't, I wish that didn't happen, right? Okay, well, our next nominee, he did exactly that. Our next nominee uh, goes as a carnivore camaraderie, okay? Uh, this guy's not super famous, but he is gaining quite a bit of attention and notoriety here on YouTube. He makes videos, uh, anti-vegan, pro-carnivore diet videos. And recently, he debated this guy. This is Nutrivore, okay? Nutrivore is well worth following if you're interested in the science and philosophy side of veganism and the plant-based diet. He's very good at active on Twitter, and he's a very good debater. Let me explain why this video looks the way it looks, and you're going to understand why this guy is an absolutely top nomination for, for Meat Flake of the Year 2022. The person on the right is Nutrivore, the vegan. He's vegan. The person on the left is Carnivore Camaraderie. Why does he have his screen blurred out, and why does he have a clown face over his face? That's because... He got so battered and ultimately absolutely ruined in this debate that when Nutrivore uploaded it to his channel, Carnivore Camaraderie reported it to YouTube and claimed he never gave permission and had the video deleted. That's how bad this debate went. If you want to vote for this guy, it's Carnivore Cringe in the live chat. Carnivore cringe in the live chat to vote for this guy. Now, this is a 30-minute long clip. I'm not going to show you 30 minutes. I'm going to show you the best three to four minutes, the funniest three to four minutes of this debate and why carnivore camaraderie actually you know, appealed to YouTube to have this removed. Let me show you what this guy looks like, actually, so you can see. I'll, I'll bring his channel up because it's not. we'll expose his face, all right? Because <laughs> it's not fair that he gets away with it, is it? This is the guy. All right, um, these are the videos he posts. So he's, he's happy to have his face all over YouTube on his own channel, saying lots of stupid stuff. He even debates some vegans on his channel, yeah? He's the guy, the, um, he's 18 years old, by the way. He's quite young. The guy on the left here in this, this video. Okay, that's the guy, right? So to put a face to the name. So let's jump in, let's watch this. Why did he want this video taken down from YouTube? Well, you're about to see. Yeah, I don't know, Nick. I mean, you're you're a very very you're a much better debater than I am. I I just think I'm um there's people who live a very very long time eating meat. It would it seems like, for, from my understanding, um they're like Greek philosophers who lived well into their hundreds eating mostly meat. So like Greek philosophers living into their hundreds and eating meat. Well, maybe they were living into their hundreds due to some other variable. Like maybe maybe religiosity has something to do with it. Like maybe a survivorship bias effect has something to do with it because they also encountered the infant and child mortality problems. Right? So it's not clear that the diet, it's not clear exactly what effect, if any, the diet is having on their longevity. Necessarily. Well, yeah, I, I just... Just, just from what I've seen in people who eat less than 20% meat or just even much less than 20% meat, very little meat, seem to be very, very unhealthy and not do very well. This is just from what I've observed and, you know. Are you collecting data about like death records or something? <laughs> no, it's just what, right, so, so that what I've seen in the past. Yeah, so like if you're not collecting that sort of data, then it doesn't interact with the proposition. Yeah, I, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't really have much more. I feel like we need to talk about. <laughs> I mean, but, but you're not willing to concede the proposition, though, right? I love this so much. No, because I, I, I believe it's true. I mean, I believe. What, know, what's I, the, you know, just try really hard, man. Like, bear with me. What is the source of the belief? <laughs> I think. Um, oh, man. I think if you make a nutritional change and you feel better from it and the only thing that you changed was the food you eat, and you consistently feel better, then I think that that is a good uh, marker for having better longevity. I don't think feeling bad, like with a certain diet, and then I don't think feeling bad is going to produce more longevity than feeling good, all, all, all other factors aside. 
Well, I mean, you're certainly not in a position to say that that you're observing all other factors aside. I mean, just it, it initially, like what you said, like if all you did was change your diet, that entails like probably like it's somewhere around a hundred different changes if you're going to something that approximates a carnivore diet, because you're you, people people typically eat varied diets of like tens of hundreds of different things, and if all of a sudden you replace all of those things with meat. You're making hundreds, uh, tens of tens or hundreds of substitutions, right? So it's not clear to me like if it was just the substitution of one of those things that had the effect, and the meat is kind of here, here nor there. And if you would have gone on a similar diet without that meat and just replaced that one thing anyway, you would have seen the exact same result. It's not clear to me that that's what's going on. And additionally, because you're not collecting like death record data, it's not clear that it interacts <laughs> with the proposition. So when you say like. I'm making these observations about the way people live or like what people are doing and it seems to like work for them or whatever. <laughs> oh, um, it's not clear to me that that is actually evidence for the proposition because the proposition, the dependent variable of interest in the proposition is maximum longevity. I don't think these are measurements of longevity, like feeling great. We go back to drugs. Drugs are not a measure. Feeling great from drugs is not a me measurement of longevity. Feeling great from smoking, feeling great from shooting opium. Th those are not measurements of longevity, right? So I don't know why it would be a, longe a measurement of longevity in this case. You need to provide an argument for that. Well, it would be having I mean, consistent energy levels, better sleep, like all these things would be good mark. Like if a diet in itself only changing the diet and, I, and I, I i hear you like you're making a ton of substitutions so on and so forth but if you're just changing your diet like you're making substitutions but all that you're changing is within the diet and you feel significantly better better sleep everything that i mentioned then we have tons of drugs that interact with sleep we have tons of drugs that interact with like your stamina and your alertness and your like wakefulness throughout the day we have tons of drugs that interact with those that probably interact with longevity in a negative way too i would prefer though that you concede the proposition because i think that would be the honest thing to do I i'm not going to concede the proposition because i believe it to be true and it's not just in like like i'm doing it myself like i'm i'm i'm, I'm doing this because i'm eating it at least 80% of me because I want to live a long time. But wait, 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 wait. But none of the reasons that you've given me for forming the belief are actually things that are clear to me should increase the credence in the belief. Like you're talking about people getting benefits. What does that have to do with maximum longevity? Like you're talking about people feeling good. What does that have to do with maximum longevity? The, the, like those, those things are decoupled, right? If you're, if, you're, if you're saying that like they're coupled somehow, you have to provide an argument for that. Hmm. Yeah, like I, I think I'm just, I think let's let's just call it because I, you know, like, yeah. Uh, well, I, 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 I'm, I'm not, no, I'm, no. I mean, like, you, you, you're gonna have to leave, right? Like, you're gonna have to <laughs> leave the call because I'm not letting you off the hook. I want a concession on the proposition because you couldn't defend it. I'm not, I'm not gonna concede the proposition. Like, well, then I'm, you're gonna I'm, have I'm, to I'm leave not... the call. I'm not leaving. <laughs> I want a, pro I want a concession on the proposition because you couldn't defend it. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just leave them. That's fine. Okay. I mean... All right. <laughs> All right. See you. Recording stop. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> so, isn't that just wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And then, you know, the beauty of that, that, that alone is amazing, right? That alone, that performance alone gets him a nomination, but... The fact that Nutrivor uploaded it to YouTube, they at the beginning of this call, he says, the carnivore camaraderie guy says, is this being recorded? Nutrivor goes, yeah. He goes, okay, okay, great, no worries. Gave permission to be recorded. It goes up on YouTube, excuse me, and then it gets taken down by YouTube because he reported it, because he claimed he never gave permission. <laughs> that, that, if that doesn't get him a couple of votes, guys, I don't know what will. I honestly don't know what will. It's amazing. Carnivore cringe to vote for this absolute cringe. Now, one thing I will say, and I feel like it would be unfair of me to leave this out about this guy, is that from what I understand, he, since this, has reflected, and, and I believe he's agreed to discuss this further um, with Nutrivore and, and spend some more time getting into it, okay? So... I don't want to. I don't want to not give you that information because that would be unfair of me. Okay. It still doesn't change what he did in this video, though. 
because it's terrible. It's a terrible, terrible performance. And what he did afterwards, getting it taken down from YouTube, honestly, getting videos taken down from YouTube as a YouTuber, if there's no, if the only reason is that you lost and you look stupid, I mean, if you gave permission to be recorded and you knew you were being recorded and, and you agreed to the debate and then it goes up, you asking to get it taken down is, is so, so, so lame. I mean, the only reason you should ever, as a YouTuber, get another YouTuber to take a video down that you're in is if you didn't give permission or they, yeah, they filmed you without, without your permission, they took your voice without your permission, they, they took your content and re-uploaded it without your permission. You know, all that kind of stuff, fair enough. But in this case, it's just the ultimate, ultimate cringe to get, try and get something taken down after you gave permission just because you lost the debate. Absolutely terrible. Carnivore cringe to vote for that absolute numpty. Are you enjoying the video, guys? Are you enjoying today's live stream? countdown of Meat Flakes of the Year 2022. I am definitely enjoying it. We've got a few more to go. We are not done yet. We are, we are far from done yet. So keep voting. And just to clear up some confusion, guys, you can hold on to your votes until the end. That's up to you, or you can vote as we go. But remember, you do not have a limit of votes. There's no limit. It's unlimited. You can only vote for every person once, but you don't have to choose one. You can vote for everybody if you want, okay? You just can't send 10 votes for each person. That's all, that's the only rule. So you can vote for everybody, but it'll all count as one vote per person. If you put the same name five times, still counts as one vote, all right? But you have unlimited votes. You can vote for as many people as you want. Totally up to you. So don't don't save your vote until the end if um, if you, you're worried that, oh, I only get one chance. No, you get loads of chances. You got lo chances for everybody, okay? Go for it. Go crazy. And I think Carnival Cringe deserves, uh, definitely deserves it. Definitely, definitely. And who knows? Maybe we can get him, if he wins, maybe we can get him on the channel to <laughs> accept his award. He's probably the only one on here who's, um, who would agree to it, to be totally honest with you. Who's ready for the next nomination for Meat Flake of the Year 2022? If you're ready, put it in the live chat. Let's go. Let's go. And we'll get the next nomination up. Now, the next nominee, okay? Joey Carbstrong is back again because this next nominee also had some, some dealings with him, okay? This guy was involved in a, a protest movement of sorts, okay? I'll give you the backstory, because it actually is a quite a sad backstory here, but, but what he did is funny. The backstory is, is kind of sad. It's very sad. Two cows escaped in, a, in, the, in the USA, okay, from a, from a farm. And they were, they were uh, caught let's say, rescued by a sanctuary. Sanctuary took them in, said, great, we got these cows escaped, we got them, they're, they're now here on our land, so we'll, we'll look after them, we'll keep them, yeah? The people who lost the cows found out and unfortunately started to, to try to get the police involved to get them back. Now, I'll tell you the end of the story was quite sad. They did get them back and they killed them, okay? It's, it's horrendous. But while this was all up in the air, the owner of the sanctuary was fighting to keep the cows, she was, her arguments were, they're not even worth that much money to the farm, okay? And at the end of the day, they escaped. Now they're here. We'll look after them forever. It's two cows. What does it matter to them? What does it matter to them? It doesn't, okay? So she was like, just leave them here. It doesn't matter. No, it didn't end up going that way. The person that we're going to talk about, the person who's a contender for Meat Flake of the Year 2022 is a man named Ed Petit. This man... This man literally, okay, I'm just gonna show you what he did. We're gonna watch what he did right now. It is embarrassing as hell. It is the most cringe you thing you're probably gonna see. I mean, we've, we've already, there's been so much cringe today. I don't know if this guy's more cringe, but I think he could potentially be more cringe, potentially, than everything else we've seen today. Let's take a look at what happened. No, no, no. not like that. Two cows matter to these beef farmers. Tracy's trying to save some lives, and the beef farmers wanna send the cows to the slaughterhouse. Where does Ed come in? Old Ed hears about this whole commotion, and you know, Ed, he can't keep it to himself. You know, he's, he's like final boss, king of all Karens. And if you have a little look-see here, <laughs> I think he thinks he's Donald Trump. He built a, a little makeshift stage on his front yard. He's made an acronym for Asher, animals stolen, hidden away. Don't mess with farmers. Cow stolen from a man, 
rights stolen from a community. Look at that. Have a look at this guy. Let's Abs go back and have a look at that. He built a stage in the front of his house to protest two rescued cows being rescued. Two cows that, that were lost by a farmer, rescued by a sanctuary, and he's, he goes, there's, there's, look at the state of it. Look at the state. Have you ever seen a meat flake go to quite this level of cringe to be a meat flake? Have you, have, you seen, have you seen a meat flake build a stage and protest because they're that much of a meat flake? If you want to vote for this guy, Petite Meat Flake. Petite Meat Flake is the vote. I think he deserves a couple of votes for this. Look at the state of it. Petite Meat Flake, all right? Because his name's Ed Petite, and he is a massive meat flake. Put that in the live chat to vote for Petite Meat Flake. You know, that's not all he did. There is more. There is some video of him. I think Joey responds to a little bit of it. It is quite long, though. We can have a little look and see the kind of stuff he's saying. Let's have, let's have a little watch. I'll speed it up as well. This is not the only thing he did, guys. He made videos on TikTok, too. Let, let, let's, let's watch a bit of it, hey? Let's, uh, let's, go on, let's go on double speed. Let's get a bit through it. Let's have a look. Coming, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to this person exactly how I think he deserves to be talked to. Why don't you join me for breakfast this morning? And what's Ed having for breakfast? I bet you some of that good old homegrown, freshly slaughtered animal sleeves. Let's have a little look. I want to show you what I have on my table. So I got my bacon and eggs. Oh, you got little pieces of uh, pig's hay? Little pieces of pig's body. Were they gas chambered or electrically stunned and stabbed to death? What do you got? A bit of uh, some stuff, something out of a, the hen's bum there? Bit of eggs, eh? Freshly, freshly grown and harvested from our, our good old farmers down there in upstate New York. I got my milk. He's got a glass of milk. Just, <laughs> just rubbing it in. A glass of titty juice too, Ed. Maybe that explains why you act like such a big man, baby. Because you're still on the tit. I got my butter. You got some butter there too. You know what, Ed? <laughs> you know what, Ed? If you keep eating like that, mate, you won't be whinging for much longer because your arteries are just going to be solidified by the end of the year. Everything you see, everything I showed you, was raised and produced on my farm. My family homestead. Mate, you're a, the, you're a farming hero, mate. You raised that pig and you stabbed him to death yourself, did you? Well, round of applause, mate. Round of applause, everyone. Everyone gather around Ed's little uh, makeshift stage here and give him a big fat round of applause. He's murdered a pig. <laughs> wow, what do you want a medal? Here's your medal. The food the, animal, the animals eat is mostly raised on my farm as well. I do my own processing because it is the way of life I chose. It's just the way of life I chose. I chose to stab pigs to death and cut pieces of their buttocks off and put them on my plate for breakfast. So there you go. It gives you a flavor of this guy, okay? With the stage and him, you know, him making these videos, defending himself. He also goes on to talk about the sanctuary. He goes on to talk about, it's all right. It's my right to stab animals in the throat. It's my right to breed these animals and, and put them through absolute hell on earth. And it's my right to get those animals back from that sanctuary where they could live peacefully for their entire lives and never have to face any horrors or anything and stab them in the throat because I like burgers. It's basically the vibe of what he did. Remember, guys, Ed Petit to vote for this absolute top class, cringe as hell numpty. Let's take one more look. Let's take one more look at his stage. His stage. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, what a bell end. What a bell end. It's, uh, it's, just, it's just unthinkable, isn't it? You wouldn't even, you couldn't write this stuff. Sometimes real life is just so much more mental than anything that you could put in a movie, right? Isn't it? Look at the state of it. What a top class bell end. Unreal. So there you go. Ed Petit to vote for Ed Petit, the not so petit, knob Ed, who protested cows being rescued in a sanctuary. Unbelievable. I want to take this moment, guys, to remind you that if you do enjoy the stream and you enjoy the videos that I make, please do consider dropping me a little tip with Streamlabs. Okay, a little Streamlabs tip or a super chat. Because every time you do that, it really helps the channel. Honestly, makes me feel really good. But more importantly, it really helps because honestly, YouTube doesn't pay that much, like at all. And the only way I continue doing this is through your either tips and, and donations here on YouTube, or if you're in the Patreon team, or if you sign up to the YouTube memberships. Honestly, that's where the bulk of what keeps us going is. So please consider it if you don't already, if you do that kind of stuff, if you're not already in the team, if you're not already supporting, but you really like the videos and you support what I do, please do consider it. And to everybody who already does do that and to everybody who's already in the Patreon team and the YouTube memberships team, thank you, you absolute legends. I can't thank you enough. You're keeping this train on the tracks. Thank you so much. All right, our next contender, our next nominee. This guy is a top class bell sprout, top class bell end. He's another old man, 
another old man who's famous for being a proper wanker, okay? That's what he's famous for. That is literally what he's famous for. I'm not even joking. Just from being a total, total knobhead, right? He doesn't really look like Piers Moron or Jeremy Flake Clarkson because he's blonde, so he looks a bit different, but he's just as bad as them, all right? He's another grumpy old British man that's famous for being a grumpy old British man with a lot of horrible takes. Do you, can you guess who it is yet, guys? Any ideas? Another grumpy old British man. His name, our next nomination, our next nominee, I'd like to introduce you to. Well, you're already, I'm not introducing you. You already know who this guy is, Total Bellend. His name is Mr. Gordon Ramsay, the famous chef. Now, what, what's this I've got video I've got up here? Well, this is the video that came out this year that puts him in the standing for Meat Flake of the Year 2022. Are you ready for this, guys? Here it goes. Yummy yum 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 yum. Yummy yum 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 yum. Which one's going in the oven first? You. Mmm. Oven time. Yeah. Yum yum. That 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 happened, guys. That that really happened. That is a multi-millionaire. Grown ass man. Jumping into a pen with lambs, baby sheeps, and telling them, I'm going to eat you, and making lots of om nom sounds, and asking them who's first, and then choosing one of them. That, that really happened. So if you want to vote for this idiot, Moron Ramsey. Now, you might be asking, why is that making him a meat flake, though? It makes him an animal abuser, but why does it make him a meat flake? Well, only a meat flake would act like that. Only a meat flake would go to that level to show the world how much of a top-class animal abusing wanker they are. Because, obviously, the vegans are the people who will care the most about this, and he knows that. That's why he did it. Fortunately, it wasn't just vegans who got upset about it. Lots of people were like, what is wrong with you? But he did it because he wanted to rile up the vegans. He clearly did it because he was upset about the the stuff with that vegan teacher when all that was going on. You know, he's he's got the, the memory of all this stuff. He wants to rile people up. That's what makes him a meat flake. He gets offended and does stupid stuff to, to, or, to animals or about animals because of how offended he is, because of how much a little baby he is. Another big man baby. More on Ramsey to vote for this idiot. Thank you so much to um, Mojka Mojka who super chatted 10 euros. Thank you so much, you absolute legend. And also, oh, why is the sloth coming up? I thought I changed that. But anyway, <laughs> thank you also to uh, 10, number 10. I, um, you didn't put a name in, but you tipped $10, number 10. So thank you also so, so much, you absolute legend, for, for sending that over as well. Um, as I said earlier, this, this is keeping the channel up and running. So I really appreciate it. All the money goes back into the work, guys. So it's all going to a good place. Back to more on Ramsey though. What what a just a just just a total bell end. Just a, just I've no not really much to say about it. I mean, if I was to break it down, it's just sick, isn't it? It's just sick. He's he's basically gone into a pen of children. These are these are baby animals, and they don't understand what he's saying. Like if he jumped into a pen of uh, or not a pen, but like a, a room of children and said this, equally they wouldn't understand what was going on. So it's not. It's not like it's not like they are understanding English and they're terrified that he's going to kill them. It's the fact that they're so innocent and vulnerable, they have no idea what he's saying. And they're even coming to him, if you look in the clip there, they're even interested in him, and he's saying he wants to kill them. I think that's what makes it so much more sick. It's that they, they don't even understand what he's saying, and they don't know what's coming, and he's reveling in that like an absolute psychopath. It's so sick on so many levels, isn't it? Phenomenal. Epic levels of meat flake. More on Ramsey. More on Ramsey to vote for the absolute, complete, and utter douchebag. Sick. The next nomination, guys. Wow. This next one's a good one. Okay? We've talked about one farmer so far. Ed Petit. Right? Ed Petit, we've, we've discussed. 
This next nominee, well, actually, it's it's not one person, the next nomination. It's it's actually a whole movement of people. A whole move of, a movement of people, of farmers, that came after me. Right? Now, uh, I'm not going to bring up any of their videos because they made videos. I don't want to give them any views and stuff like that because they honestly their channels get no attention and i don't want to give them more attention i don't want to get any of you guys going to their channels because it'll make them feel like they've achieved something so i'm not going to give them the attention they crave but i am going to show you a couple comments and maybe some of them are from the channels but we're not going to go look at their videos because it's i don't want to give them views right but something happened last year this year obviously this year something happened this year okay it was in february do any of you remember any actions or activities or anything on my channel from around February 14th, Valentine's Day. Do any of you remember a video that I made? Anyone? If you do, you might know what's coming. Because, uh, <laughs> because um, I did a video, okay, and a movement of farmers and, and people sympathetic to farmers, according to them, reported me to the FBI. I'm not made, I'm promised, I've got proof that they said they did this anyway. Reported me to the FBI, okay? Claiming the, the FBI has an international unit and they're gonna come for me and um, everything's, on my channel, everything's done. Everything's over for me, okay? Why did they do that, okay? Is it, did I, did I do something that deserved it or were they meat flakes? I think you already know the answer to that question. If you wanna vote for these guys, we're going to show you soon. We're going to show you soon. If you want to vote for these guys, though, your code is FBI Meat Flakes. Okay? FBI Meat Flakes. Let me show you why they wanted, they, they wanted me to be taken down by the FBI. Here we go. Here's the clip that did it. Valentine's Day, and I'm trying to give vegans and people who know vegans some tips for, uh, for, for Valentine's Day gifts. I know it's hard for us men, and I'm a generous guy. So I found this great article about the best Valentine's Day gifts to get a vegan, and I'm gonna give you a few tips. Take it to a field. Vegans love grass, and grazing helps the countryside. It's called regenerative farming. Go for a B12 shot together, so she can remember her name again. Print off an A4 size photo of Earthling Ed's face. Wear it as a mask, and say things like moral agency and unnecessary suffering. I promise you, she'll love it. Now. Before, I, I already showed it. It's clear by this point, by number three, that everything in this video is the opposite of what you should do. It's, it's satire. It's all things that you shouldn't do. Correct? You understand? You shouldn't do any of these things. They're all bad. They're all bad things to do, okay? Here we go, number one, take it to a field. Number two, go for a B12 shot. Number three, print off an A size, A4 size. We're clear here, right? We all understand the joke. The joke is, don't do these things. These are not good things to do for a vegan on Valentine's Day. So let's continue. And say things like moral agency and unnecessary suffering. I promise you, she'll love it. Send death threats to a farmer. Now that's not funny. All farmers aren't bad and we need to remember that. Send death threats to an animal farmer. Go on a date at McDonald's and scream murderer at everybody going in. She'll absolutely love it. I promise you guys. The guy in our- That's it. That's it. Did you see what, what got me reported to the FBI? That one clip out of all these jokes, this one. This one, and then the obvious joke of this one. Obvious jokes, satire, clearly satire, because everything in this video clip here is satirical. Now, how about the evidence, though? You, you may not believe me. Did, did I get reported to the FBI? Well, let's have a look at report and search in the comments for the word report. Reported. Can you guys see this? Let me slow down a little bit. Reported to police. Reported. I don't think so, Mr. Ramsden. Reported. You're able to report this video. I have. Hilarious that a vegan was in death threats and pretend to be compassionate. Okay, reported. Um, reported to YouTube. Uh, FBI have international offices here. People talking about he's he, if he's invested is investigated by the FBI and his followers will be investigated too. Uh, people reporting the comments as well. Now also, also I will put in the word FBI. Lunatic, you are definitely on an FBI watch list. It's not a big deal. The FBI is already investigating this video. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god. You and then and then yeah. And I got uh, I, I couldn't find them, okay guys, but there was another person who was on my community tab posts telling me if I do not remove this video in the next 24 hours. The, then, then the FBI, he's got a full p report sent to, to send to the, F to the FBI, and it's my last chance. And he kept on commenting, I think he might have emailed me, but I couldn't find the emails. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. All for a joke that was, you, you, I mean, I can't even begin to express. I, I don't understand how anyone could watch the series one to five of this series of clear satirical jokes and then think one of them was definitely serious. FBI meat flakes, guys. If you'd like to vote for this, absolute losers. Oh, my God. And if you want to go and find the videos they made about me, you could just type in uh, David Rams. Uh, what did they say about me? What was it? It was something like, <clears throat> God, the videos all had like a similar thing, like David Rams, um, terrorist, David Rams, evil, uh, stuff like that. It was it was hilarious. There was like four or five videos they made. It was absolutely hilarious. So yeah, FBI meat flakes. If you'd like to vote for those absolute complete numpties, <laughs> so cringe, so cringe, guys. Brilliant. You know, at the time it was like I was. <laughs> is is am I really gonna get a call from the FBI at this point? That I have nothing better to do than to watch sat satirical videos on YouTube. I mean, I'm sure, uh, maybe it'd be hilarious if, if, if someone had to waste their time to go and watch that, you know. Unbelievable. Okay. I see we have a, su uh, a, a tip from Ian who says, have you covered the meat flake farmers Cliff Grant met during his activism yet? They were pretty horrible with a link. You will not believe the timing, Ian. Thank you for your $5 do uh, tip. And as it happens, and I, you're not going to believe this, we have one more nomination before we get to who wins, and before we get to who wins, though, we're going to also talk about the awards. We're going to give out some awards to Meat Flake fighters, to the vegans who've been fighting these people all year. But we have one more nomination, and guess what it is? It's Cliff, Cliff Grant's Farmer Meat Flakes. So if you don't know what's going on here, well, first of all, before we watch this video, the code to vote for these guys in the live chat is Milk Flake, Milk Flake Farmers. Because in this video, activist Cliff Grant is on the streets alone doing outreach, okay? Two dairy farmers come over to him. Young dairy farmers start giving him shit. Watch this. This is, it is, it is, it is incredible levels of meat flakery. And if you want to vote for these two absolute numpties, Milk Flake Farmers is the code. I cannot believe, I'm sorry, I just want to say this one more time. Ian, I cannot believe the timing that you suggested this, literally. It was right at the moment that I was bringing it in any way. Absolute legendary. The, the universe, it's all aligning, guys, because we're in the right place, we're at the right time, we're doing the right things. Let's have a look at this. Something you put your hand on it with a fucking metal rod. I know exactly what you do, I've seen it. Yes, have you? Yeah. The word going right. And then you put your hand inside their no, ass, it and might not be your little cervix, That's correct or incorrect. All, nope, all see farmers. here, see a dairy cow. There's two different ways you can put them in calf. A cow can show its hell in heat, then you put your shit, then you. Artificially and inseminate down here, yeah. then what they call it. They're not out here, is man. Well, you're not fucking her standing here, like, slowing big animal abuse. You, you hear that? So he said, you, you artificially inseminate the old whore. And then he says, they're not old whores. And he says, well, you're an old whore standing here slabbering about animal abuse. These are dairy farmers, right? Both of them. But they love their cows, right? They love their animals. Hmm, sure. Yeah, we, no, all. You know, no, 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 we farmers don't go around shouting. Man, first of all, I'm not a vegan cunt. And number two, I know a lot about animals because I'm an animal rights activist. And I educate people on, on what happens in animal agriculture. So you didn't answer my question. Kicking a dog is bad, that's abuse. Yes. But hanging an animal, another animal upside down and cutting it's their throat. It's dead. It's not dead. Yes, it is. See when you go get a tooth removed. What do they do? Freeze your mouth? Yes. You can't feel it. Yeah. Exactly. I'm thinking we did animals. So you're saying it's humane to bolt gun somebody in the head? That's fucking animal, animal abuse. Leave the sign alone. Are you telling me that to bolt gun somebody in the head is humane? A cow's not a fucking human. Yeah, but here. Bolt gun an animal in the head then yeah, is humane. How about, yes. how about the you rather death just penalty? Cut with how about the, how about death penalty? Yeah, but the death penalty is a different thing. Somebody's done Fine. something wrong with the death penalty. The cows have done nothing wrong in anybody. They're completely innocent. Ah, ah. 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 
No, look, why can why can vegans not? I'm being respectful here. Why can I'm vegan... being respectful? See, I'm yes. being respectful to you or not? I, I didn't say you aren't. Vegans go around pro, pro, saying that farmers should quit farming. We don't no. go around. Yes, they do. No, I support yes, farmers. Do. I support farmers. You support all them fucking wankers that grow fucking vegetables and that shit. Yes. What, why... What's wrong with that? I didn't say there's anything wrong with it. But why 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 do you have to go around telling us that we should stop farming cattle? Because we don't go around telling. Because it causes an immense so amount of violence and cruelty. Oh, God. How? How? Well, where's all the boy calves? If they're good enough, they're kept for fucking breeding. If they're not, they go for meat. Yeah. So yeah. what happens when they go for meat when they so go to a slaughterhouse? Happens? Does everybody want to turn fucking vegan and start eating all that shit you eat? It's like fucking fake sausage rolls and all that. I don't eat a lot of that stuff, man. I eat a whole food plant based diet. I eat a lot of vegetables yeah. and nuts and seeds and pulses and all sorts right, so of you stuff. Don't eat any, any There's meat. literally thousands of edible plants in this world. I'm 56 in January. I haven't eaten an animal product since I was 19. I am thriving on a vegan diet. Mm -hmm. So if I can do that, and an animal doesn't have to be taken to a slaughterhouse and hung upside down and so have their throat cut. you think you any less animals being culled for yes. meat? Yes, because most people eat, How? on average, about 150 animals in a year. So if I can ask one person to stop paying animal agriculture for animals or for dairy products or for eggs... But you need to fucking go and get your head fucking looked at talking that shit. <laughs> Man, that's not much of an argument, to be honest. Unbelievable, huh? So two dairy farmers, two dairy farmers walk past one man, and, and you know, he's an old older guy, older gent, 56, stood there on the street, not bothering anyone, come over to him, call him a, I'm not gonna drop the C-bomb because I think, I don't know, YouTube is funny, the C-bomb, calling him a wanker, calling him an effing this and effing that, vegan C-bomb, all this stuff, because he stood there with the sign and he wanted to talk to people about animal rights and veganism. That is another example of what meat flakes look like. They could have walked on by and gone back to their farms and carried on doing what they were doing. With just, you know, it's not like he was in their way. It's not like he was at their farm. It's not like he was going to them and saying, hey, you come talk to me. They chose to go to him and kick off, right? Unbelievable. And they called him all these names and everything. Milk flake farmers. Milk flake farmers. As, as Sue Soon just put in the chat, chat there, they feel so threatened. You're absolutely right. They're so threatened, and they act like big man babies. Now, someone says, Leon said here, they also tried to take his camera. In which part did they try to take the camera? Because I, I, I haven't seen... I watched the video, but I, I, miss, I suppose I must have missed that. Is that near? Is that a bit that I missed? Was it near the beginning or something? Because I didn't see them try to take it just there. Can you tell me? I'll try and find that bit. Like, which? Give me a timestamp for that. Because when I first watched it, I didn't, I, I don't know, I didn't see that bit. <laughs> More towards the end. Because I've seen it, or maybe I was listening at one point. When he was talking to the woman, they walked past. Did they really? Okay, then. Let's have, oh, is it there? Oh, okay, let's have a look. And I, I was emotionally distraught. I know all about it. I've done same vigils. I don't know if you know what that is, that's lower houses. Um, you're going to make me cry. Oh, God, no. Brittle. It, Absolutely it brutal. My heart. It so, my heart. in case you don't know already, I'm not even going to go through the questions that I normally ask. I'm a vegan activist. I'm trying to be a vegan. I'm, I'm on my way. Here, man, leave the camera alone. Leave the camera alone. Don't shave the feet. They don't like it. No. But anyway. Um, Damn. Come this way a wee bit and then I'll get it on camera. So. I'm Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That That's, come on, that's got to get a vote. Milk Flake Farmers. What two little absolute balance. Like I said, he's not in anyone's way. He's not causing anyone any trouble. He's not, he's, he's, he's clearly not a threatening individual. You hear the way he talks. You see the attitude he has. He's, he's the, look at him. I'm sorry, but look at him. He's the least threatening guy you could ever see stood in the street holding a sign. But yet they come over and not only are they threatening with their words, they're, 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 they're close to him. You know, they're physically kind of like leaning in. You see the body language is very aggressive. He's the opposite of all of that. Only meat flakes act like that. Only meat flakes would ever take that kind of attitude towards a vegan when the vegan is acting like Cliff Grant is acting in that video. So milk flake farmers to vote for those two absolute little knobheads, little pricks. <laughs> I'm just throwing every insult at them because it's what they are. It's what they are, you know. At the end of the day, I know they did that to him. They threw insults at him, but he did nothing to deserve it. They deserve every insult that comes to them, the little... Little goons, little numpties. All right, all right. Milk flake farmers to vote for these two. Absolute milk flakes. And guys, 
believe it or not, that is our final nomination of the day. So let's go through them all one by one and who we've had. And you get a chance to vote again, OK? So we'll get a picture up as well and everything. So we have Piers Morgan for his, for his unbelievably consistent meat flake work over the year of 2022 and also previous as well. He's, he never really stops. Eating a Big Mac in front of a vegan activist, an animal rights activist uh, on a show where he brought her on to interview her about topics that he wanted to, apparently wanted her to educate him on and then just went on to bully her, talk over her, interrupt her, not let her finish anything she had to say and then eat a Big Mac in front of her, uh, a cold Big Mac or some kind of silly stunt. Piers Moron to vote for this absolute, complete and utter numpty. Then we add Jeremy Clarkson, or as we're calling him here, Jeremy Flake Clarkson, if you want to vote for him. He said that vegans get no sex. He said we're all pasty and anemic and sick. And he also went out and did a protest, a protest against a council in the UK serving vegan food. I mean, he definitely deserves a few votes, guys. I think so. I know you guys weren't too convinced, but I think I still think he deserves just a grumpy old meat flake vote. Grumpy old meat flake vote. Jeremy meat flake Clarkson. And we've got Stabby Simon, the uh, guy who threatened to stab vegan activist Joey Carbstrong in the neck because Joey Carbstrong was giving people vegan chicken. He threatened to stab him in the neck over vegan chicken, guys. I mean, Stabby Simon, come on. He, he, that is just, he, he needs to be voted for. He, he, I know a lot of you voted already. That's great. If you weren't sure, I mean, Jesus, he deserves it. Thank you, Mag, by the way, for the tip. You absolute legend. Thank you so, so, so much. Really, really appreciate it. I don't know if you had a message that to go with that or if it didn't work. If so, just, just let Annie know and she'll let me know, okay? If that ever happens to you, let Annie know in the chat and then she'll send it over to me. Then we've got this vegan sausage expert <laughs> who ate the vegan sausage, said he loved it, tasty, luscious, tasted like meat. And when he found out it was vegan, said it tasted like cardboard and tissue paper. My vegan sausage to vote for that meat flake numpty for meat flake of the year 2022. Then we've got Neil the Ass Tyson. Neil the Ass Tyson to vote for Neil the Ass Tyson. The, uh, the renowned astrophysicist who <laughs> has the most intellectual meat flakery you'll ever see. If any award, if he's going to win any award, <clears throat> intellectual meat flake of the year he could take. But does he get overall meat flake of the year 2022? Well, that's up to you. Neil the Ass Tyson, if you want to vote for that. That absolute numpty. Then we add this guy, Dr. Dr. Meatflake, the veterinarian, Dr. Zoltan Zabo, who blocked me after I made a very reasonable and nice comment on a post where he was asking for advice from vegans about veganism. And he blocked me. A veterinary doctor who posted this photo of him carving up a turkey with the hashtag avian specialist. And he's a vet who saves animals for a living. Dr. Meatflake for that absolute top class meat flake. Then we add carnivore camaraderie, the clown on the left side of this video, the carnivore YouTuber who got so demolished in a debate, so absolutely blasted and ruined in a debate that he got the debate taken down from YouTube, claiming he never gave permission for it to be up on YouTube. Unbelievable. Carnivore cringe to vote for that one. We had Petite Meat Flake, the guy Ed Petite who made her, <laughs> made her stage Oh, because he was so upset because the sanctuary saved two cows from certain death. So he made a stage and protested about it. Absolute meat flake. <clears throat> we have Moron Ramsey, who jumped into a pen of lambs and told them all how excited he was to eat them and that he was going to kill them because he's such a, a, a lovely, definitely not psychopathic guy. Moron Ramsey, for voting for Moron Ramsey, we had the FBI meat flakes who claimed they were going to thre threaten me, telling me they're going to report me to the FBI for making a joke in my video uh, about things you shouldn't do. And this being one of the things you definitely shouldn't do, guys. Don't do this. Please. It's a horrible thing. Never do this. And in the video, it was clearly a joke. Okay? But to, be, to, be, to make that completely clear, they threatened to call the FBI over a joke. Hilarious. And then finally, these two milk flake farmers, the milk flake farmers, vote for those milk flake farmers by putting the words milk flake farmers in the live chat. 
who just came over to a peaceful activist and started calling him all kinds of names and showing off about how they like to abuse animals. There it is, guys. That brings us to the uh, the voting segment. So our votes to be the votes are being counted right now in the other room by Annie. And while they're being voted, we've got another type of award to give out right now because we're going to give out three awards for out for meat flake fighters. Okay, three awards for meat flake fighters. These are people who've been working over the last year, who've done some great work. Uh, fighting against meat flakes, okay? So they've been debunking, they've been doing some good work online or maybe in face-to-face. -face. Uh, there's three of them that I've chosen that I think deserve some, some, some attention from you, okay? Are you ready for the, for the... I'm looking because I was getting it already. I, I, didn't, I didn't prep, but it's prep. It's, it's all good now, okay? I'm back. I'm back on the camera. Are you ready for the Meat Flake Fighter Awards 2022, guys? If you're ready... As always, pop in the comments, I'm ready. I'm ready, okay guys? And we're gonna get into the Meat Flake Fighters of 2022 that deserve your attention, that deserve some awards. Our first award goes to the Outstanding Meat Flake Fighter of the Year Award, okay? This is for somebody who throughout the year ha has either shown throughout the year or in one specific occasion, just any time, something that really, really stands out, okay? Something that is like, wow, this is outstanding. This is, this is an outstanding Meat Flake fighter moment, and you deserve the award for Meat Flake, Outstanding Meat Flake Fighter of the Year, okay? That's what, I, that's what I was looking for, and I found it. And actually, the person who's receiving this award, you just watched him. You just watched him because I am going to award the Outstanding Meat Flake Fighter of the Year Award to Mr. Cliff Grant, the activist you just saw in the last video arguing with those two milk flake farmers. This is Cliff Grant. This is his YouTube channel, okay? He has only 1,300 subs, which is pretty good, but I think he deserves a hell of a lot more. If you don't already sub, go over and sub. The guy is consistently doing street activism, oftentimes alone, and just honestly, just for the performance he gave in that video with those two little meat f milk flake farmers, he did not lose his temper once. He completely kept his cool. He was so chill. He dealt with everything. He, he, it didn't even seem like he broke a sweat. Absolutely phenomenal work. Absolutely deserving of outstanding meat flake fighter of the year. Cliff Grant, congratulations, mate. I don't know why I'm not subbed to you. That's a disgrace. But I have been seeing your videos. So I'll give you the sub right now. Lead by example. Guys, get over there and sub to Cliff Grant and check out his videos for some great lessons on how to do outreach because the guy is clearly very, very good at it. All right? Outstanding Meat Flake Fighter of the Year. Congratulations, Cliff Grant. All right, then. You happy with that one? You think that's a good award? You think he deserves it? I think he deserves it. I don't know Cliff personally. I, I don't know. I think potentially we've, been in, we've, been, we've spoken in DMs on Instagram, potentially. Um, I think, but I don't think I've met him personally. If you do know him personally, hey, let him know about this. I'll drop him a DM later on as well. I didn't really tell anybody about these awards, <laughs> but uh, he can come watch it later, can't he? If, if, um, if he? if he wants to come check out and get his accolades and pat on the back and feel good about it. And I'll also DM him to let him know because I think it's, I think it's great to have that kind of support, right? He's clearly doing a lot of work, clearly cares about animals, and I just you know can't thank him enough. Cliff, doing a great job, mate. You deserve Outstanding Meat Flake Fighter of the Year. You absolutely deserve it. All right, next up, our next award for the Meat Flake Fighters. This is Most Improved Meat Flake Fighter of the Year. Most Improved Meat Flake Fighter of the Year of 2022. This is for somebody who has been doing good work, but in 2022, they stepped it up. They stepped it up. They, they, they did something that really just, they evolved. They grew. They became better and better and better as the year went on. More concise, more powerful, more educated with the, with, the, with the debunks, more spicy, more just, just improvement in, in, in any way, okay? That's who this person is. The person we're about to talk about here, the person we're about to give this to, okay? He's been consistently debunking meat flakes throughout the year, okay? Consistently. And if you look at the, the debunks from the beginning of the year to now, 
he's also improved so, so much. Not that they were ever bad. They were never bad. But now they're at another level. And you can see that with the views on his videos constantly increasing with each post. Okay? He has debunked and roasted Neil the Ass Tyson, Jordan Peterson, Joe Rogan, Liver King, Steve-O, Rick Rubin, and loads, loads more. And recently, his hard work was rewarded when he got the job working for Joey Carbstrong in his comment section, just proving how good he really is at fighting meat flakes. In a, in, in, Joey Carbstrong has the worst meat flakes you'll ever see. So trust me, getting that job makes him arguably one of the most efficient meat flake fighters out there. The award for most improved meat flake fighter of the year 2022 does go to Lifting Vegan Logic. Danny Ishe, Lifting Vegan Logic. Congratulations to Danny. Guys, I know a lot of you already subbed to Danny, but if you don't, I absolutely recommend you get over to his channel, Lifting Vegan Logic, and drop him a sub. He is absolutely one of the best meat flake fighters out there in the world right now. He's very consistent. He is also, you'll see him in Joey Carbstrong's Facebook comment section. He goes as the admin there because he's that good at it. An inspiration for anybody who wants to see how to use logic, science to debunk, as well as in the Facebook comment section of Joey's uh, Facebook, you'll see how to handle the kind of nonsense that we all face on a daily basis in a productive but firm way. He's very good at it. So Lifting Vegan Logic, Danny, congratulations, mate. Doing a great job. Keep it up. And well done for all the improvement you've made over this year. It's been, it's been great to watch, mate. It's been great to be a part of. You are smashing it. I think I maybe just showed you the next. <laughs> oh no! If you don't, don't go back and look that. Look at that. If you saw the next person, because it's a, don't you don't spoil it for anybody else, okay? Because the next person, okay, the next award, the next award I'm going to give out. I'm going to start doing this every year. This is a Hall of Fame Meat Flake Fighter. This award goes to somebody who deserves to be considered as as a Hall of Famer. Somebody who has been doing it for so long, so consistently, that the only award that, that means makes any sense to give them, the only award that that is sufficient is to put them in the Hall of Fame of Meat Flake Fighters. Because they've done so much, so much to deserve it that it gets to a point where you just have to put them in the Hall of Fame and say, Do you know what? That's where you belong, okay? So that's this next award. So this Hall of Fame award, the Hall of Fame Meat Flake Fighter for 2022, the one who's added to the Hall of Fame. This person, I'm not going to give you the gender because I think it'll give it away, but this person has been consistently debunking meat flakes for years and years and years on YouTube. Now started on Twitter, also on Instagram. They are almost every day they are live streaming, almost every day. They live stream debates. They live stream responses and reactions. It is just consistent. And honestly, they do not get anywhere near the amount of attention they deserve. A lot of you are making guesses, but your guesses are too obvious. Because I'm, I would never put somebody who already has all of that attention in the Hall of Fame because they, they, we already know. We already know who they are, what they're doing. This is not... This is not for the people who are already in the public eye with millions of subs and millions of followers and millions of views. This is for somebody who deserves the Hall of Fame regardless of how many followers they have, even though this person deserves way more, way, way, way more for the work they put in. So I'm happy to announce that this year's Hall of Famer added to the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame Meat Flake Fighter is, as some of you have already guessed, Vegan Gaze, Ellie, who has, by the way, a substantial 7,000 subs, but for the work she puts in, it is far lower than it should be. Ellie is consistent, non-stop, non-stop, live streaming, making videos, and has been doing it for years and years and years and years, despite never getting the massive, you know, huge successes of people like Joey and Ed, she has never stopped consistently going for it. And, and she does an amazing job. And as I said, does not get the accolades she deserves. So please get over there and subscribe because she deserves it. 
She deserves way more subs than that. She deserves way more views. The work she does is incredible. And I, and I, she, this is why I'm getting her in the Hall of Fame. She needs to be in the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame Meat Flake Fighters. One of the most consistent and long standing Meat Flake Fighters out there, I, I believe. So, Ellie, vegan gays, congratulations. I hope this gets you a couple more subs. If you don't already sub to Ellie, get over there and sub and watch her videos and go into her live streams. If you're a vegan, there's, there's, what's, what, what, what more do you need? Like she does great live streams. It's a great community over there. People are very nice and friendly, lots of vegans, and they enjoy a good discussion and a good debate. And, and sometimes, oftentimes, she debates with um, non-vegans. And she's streaming right now, I believe. Let's have a look. Hold up. Maybe we can stream her stream. How about that? Ah, this is fun. So maybe this could be like a, some kind of, some kind of uh, Inception stream here. Yo, you people are funny. Oh. Right. She just reacted to the Hall of Fame stuff. Are you ready? Ellie. Are we ready? Ellie. <laughs> Are we ready? Did she already react or is she gonna is she gonna talk more about it? Let's see. I'll message her. Oh, is it is it loading? What's going on there? Hey. Is that me or is that the stream? Uh oh, I won the Hall of Fame. There we go. You're trolling me. <laughs> the Hall of Fame. What? I'm being trolled so hard. No. Thank you for the subscribe. I'm going to message up. Right, look. Straight up honest with me. David's yelling my name. Are you fucking with me right now? <laughs> right, look, if I go over and you're, you, I'm being bummed by you. Okay. I swear to God. I'm messaging. I'm messaging. There'll be a I'm delay. Message up. Right, look. Oh, that's so crazy. Up no, me. I'm being trolled again. David's yelling my name. Are you fucking with me right now? <laughs> okay, that's really confusing. I don't think we can keep this up. <laughs> it's a stream and a stream and a stream. I swear to God. I'm messaging, I'm messaging. There'll be a delay. Oh, that's so crazy. No, I'm being Hello. This is the... <laughs> Guys, this is freaky as hell. I don't even know how this works. Okay, that's really confusing. I don't think we can keep this up. No, we can't. We can't. <laughs> it's a stream and a stream and a stream. Oh my God, it's infinite. I'm messaging, I'm messaging. There'll be a delay. <laughs> we can't oh, do this. So crazy. Ellie, <laughs> stop watching me. <laughs> this, is, this is bad. Look at that infinite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put this. Has she got it? She seems really happy. That's nice, huh? What is the actual award, though? Hall of Fame. <laughs> what is the award? Hall of Fame. You're in the Hall of Fame. What is the award? I'm so confused. I can't watch this. No, you can't watch this. Hang on. Let me go back. <laughs> This is so oh, funny. Right <laughs> Alright, we'll watch this for a little bit more. And then oh, there, there I am. for the work they put in. So I'm happy to announce that this year's Hall of Famer added to the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame Meat Flake Fighter is as some of you have already interrupting the lap tipped one hundred pounds. Oh my god. What's happy right birthday. Now? Wow, look at that. What's happening right now? <laughs> Am I dead? What a timing! Look at that. Are the mushrooms working? <laughs> she gets a hundred pound tip and the meat flake fire, meat flake fighter What's hall of famer. Fuck, man. Amazing. Thank you. It's not my birthday, but amazing. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, go, go over to David's stream. Okay, just, just go over there because I, I, I don't know. What <laughs> she needs? To, she's right at the moment. Um, it's my second birthday. Absolutely. Oh my god, this is I can't believe she's hanging on this Wait, moment where I announce it. That over there? Stop watching me. <laughs> <laughs> Go away. <laughs> David. <laughs> You've got to accept the award. <laughs> uh, uh, so keep playing the video. <laughs> Thank you, interruption. Um I think I'm having a breakdown. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I don't. I'm dribbling. Um, thank you. For the. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. My bean counter is... Keep playing the video. I could cry. I'm not going to cry. Cry. You're going to cry. She has to cry. Speech. <laughs> <laughs> I'd first really like to thank every single Ding Dong uh, for breaking me down so that... <laughs> <laughs> Right, let's watch the Hall of Fame. Come Already on. guessed. There you go. Vegan gays. Already guessed. Ellie, who has, by the way, a substantial 7,000 subs, but for the work she puts in, substantial. it is... Thank you. Substantial. By the way, I recently hit 7K. I don't know if you know about that, but I did actually hit 7K subscribers. So, yeah, <clears> do <throat> I get stopped in the street every day? Basically. You know, it's just part of being famous. Nice pause there for yeah, me. So oh, like a proper 7, mom. <laughs> And I'm just going to keep saying it until you give me 8,000. The meme will never die. Let's, let's go. Far lower than it should be. <gasps> True. Ellie is consistent non-stop. Oh. Non okay, it's getting gross now. Say something really <laughs> Is it not going to be the most condescending award? <laughs> no. Condescending? <laughs> non-stop. Live streaming, making videos. and has This been is a lie. I don't live stream. <laughs> Slander. Slander. Okay. God, it's gonna take a while, huh? Years and years and years yes. and years. Years and years. Despite yes. never getting the massive, you know, huge successes. All, of all the bitches. <laughs> That's the bit that pisses me off the most. Where are all the bitches? <laughs> True. True. People like Joey and Ed. She's never stopped. Yeah, are they lesbians? Shit. No, they're not. So where's my? <laughs> Yeah, they're not lesbians, are they? The uh, that's the difference. I'm a lesbian, so <laughs> in fact, I should be more popular. <laughs> just on the account of being a lesbian. Okay, well, look, people say we love lesbians. Okay? Oh, my lesbians God. Lesbians are great. <laughs> oh, yeah? Prove it, bitch. Shower if she doesn't get me. moving, we're going to move on. <laughs> yeah, granny gays. Oh, love, back and back. Oh, my God. We didn't even need to say. We were I've just tried to sell you guys to sub, and she's doing this shit. shit. It's embarrassing thing. for me. <laughs> yeah, lacking with the, the, the best bean of all. Ellie! Right? Like, interruption has filled up my bean fund with a fake birthday, but the true bean that <laughs> I'm seeking. Do you know what? Seeking. Oh, my God. Right. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> all right, well, that's great. It's great that we got to saw her react anyway and, and be so excited and get a hundred hundred pound tip. And I'm pretty sure, well, I hope that's because of the award we gave here that somebody was like, yeah, she deserves the support and give it. Because that's, that's just awesome. If that's true... If that in person, the interruption, did it because of that, I'm that, that makes me so incredibly happy. That that that's that's just amazing. So, hold up, I'm, I'm hearing. Wait, um, I'm 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 understanding that we've got we've got the results of Meat Flake of the Year 2022 in. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, looks like we've got them in. Perfect. Oh, can you can you thank you thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Wow. Well, this is, this is a shock. This is a shock. Hold up, hold up. Sorry. Annie, I need to, Annie? Annie? Hello? Hold up, hold up, guys. No, this, this can't be right. Right. Well, it's 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 a shocker. I've got to I've got to be honest with you. It's a shocker. It's a shocker, guys. All right. Well, the winner of this prestigious trophy, Meat Flake of the Year 2022. Let's go from third place down. Okay. In third place, we actually have a draw with 22 votes. Okay. We have a draw between Stabby Simon. And Carnivore Cringe at third place, okay? Stabby Simon and Carnivore Cringe. And that's the last time I'm going to tell you the number of votes. Because I don't want to, okay? I'm just going to tell you who came in second place. In second place, surprisingly, 
coming in from the back. We have Petite Meat Flake. Petite Meat Flake in second place. Now that leaves only a few major meat flakes for the final, the meat flake of the year 2022, the winner. And I know some of you may be already thinking you know who it is, but you're going to be surprised by this. It isn't who we all expected. The winner of the meat flake of the year 2022 goes to the winner. I'm going to do that again. The, maybe you saw it. The winner of Meat Flake of the Year 2022, with the most votes out of every Meat Flake we've been through today, going home with this prestigious Meat Flake of the Year trophy is Neil deGrasse Tyson, or as we refer to him, Neil the Ass Tyson. So congratulations to the astrophysicist with no ethical framework whatsoever, the astrophysicist who thinks the only purpose of a cow is to be turned into steak. The astrophysicist who thinks trees bleed and suffocate and deserve the same consideration as, a, as an animal. The, 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 the same consideration as your pet dog or a cow. He believes that because vegans don't argue for the rights of ticks and mosquitoes that we're hypocrites. Neil the Ass Tyson wins Meat Flake of the Year. 2022. Wow. Piers Morgan didn't even make it into the top three, guys. I, I am shocked. I am shocked. Phenomenal. And I'm happy because that would have been too obvious, wouldn't it? That would have been way too obvious to give it to Piers bloody Morgan. He's just, he is Piers Morgan, isn't he? I'm so glad that we had a new contender to come in and wipe the floor with him for Meat Flake of the Year. It's just, wow. And what a year it's been. What a year it's been. Every one of these nominations deserved this award, right? All of them have really, really been at it this year in the worst ways you can think of. It's been embarrassing. It's been consistently embarrassing to see all these grown-ass men, with the exception of the 18-year-old carnivore camaraderie, the rest of them are grown-ass men acting like massive man-babies because they want to eat the burgers and the vegans want them to realize it's animal abuse. It's been, it's been cringe. It's been, it's been terrible. Okay. But there's hope. As we've seen, we've got some great meat flake fighters. We've got some great vegans out there doing the work, doing the work, the dirty work, dealing with these complete numpties and really doing a great job of it. So all I can say is thank you to every single person that stands up against these absolute toss pots and numpties and meat flakes and just wow. Thank you to all of you who post and like and comment on posts and who make content or share content. Every single one of you that supports me, supports Danny at Lifting Vegan Logic, Vegan Gaze and Cliff Grant. To every single one of you that's here on my channel right now that have sent through Streamlabs tips and, and super chats to support the stream, that joined my Patreon team, that joined the YouTube memberships team because Every time you do all of these things, every time you do any of these things, you are a meat flake fighter. Because if you don't do that, if you don't support my stream or support the other creators, if you don't join our Patreons or don't do all that stuff, we can't do what we do. So if you're somebody who's going out there and fighting as well as supporting, that's incredible. If you can't do the fighting yourself, but you wanna support, you wanna get it done, that's an option to do it. And I'm so thankful for those of you that choose to support me and, and my fighting these meat flakes. As I said, I can't do it without you. Thank you to the Patreon team. Thank you to the YouTube, YouTube memberships team. Thank you to everybody who, do, who donates and tips in these live streams. 2023 is coming and I'm not going anywhere. We've got a lot to come with, I'm sure. Who knows what 2023 is going to bring? Who knows the kind of meat flakes we're going to see in 2023. They're really stepping it up recently. So who knows what we're going to see. Guys, I'm here for it. Keep sending them to me. Um, before we close off, I want to say one last thing to Simon, Simon Flames. Thank you for the tip. I missed it a little bit earlier. We missed Andrew Tate, I suppose. I didn't include Andrew Tate because I, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't feel like he was meat flake enough for this list. But who knows what's coming in 2023. Maybe he'll do enough to make the list. 
Who knows? Who knows? Um, but anyway, we'll finish here. It's been a wonderful one. <laughs> I think that's what you can say. If that's what you could say. If, if this could ever be wonderful, dealing with meat flakes for a couple hours. <laughs> but it's been, it's definitely been enlightening. We've learned a lot. We've laughed a lot. And we'll see what 2023 has to offer, guys. Keep calling out that BS. I'll see you all very, very soon.